Okay. Good afternoon, good evening, good morning, everyone. Welcome. As you can see, I'm solo right now, but that won't be for long. Um, Pooch is um, on his way. So, hey, Mitchell. Hey, Brian. Hey, PF Dennis. Hey, Apollo. How is everyone this Tuesday or Wednesday, depending on where you are? <laughs> hey, Mike. Hey, Cheesy Potato. Hey, Rod. Hey, Derek. Hey, Steve and Bill. We'll get all the all the greetings out of the way. Hey, Derek. Hey, Brian. Who else do we have? Mike and Nappin, Martin, Viney. How are we? We are going to finish this today. Hey, Bob. Hey, Pathetic Puma. Hey, Ricky. Hey, Northern Customs and Beartastic. <laughs> Definitely Wednesday here in the future. Hey, Brian. I've got the garage door open, so if we have extra sounds, that's why. I didn't want to have to worry about that when um, Pooch shows up. So he'll just be able to come right on in and we'll get going. Hey, Laura. Hey, Sean. Who else? Jeff. So when we left off, we had finished the Y carriage. And so we'll just go through a couple little things. I did nothing um, between streams. So we are going to be able to dive right into making sure the belts are tensioned and um, putting the bed on and finishing it up. And then we'll print. So, what have I got? Kittrell, hello, and hi Skyrim, and Daniel. Just because of that, I'm gonna stay up. That's right, so we do, uh, as with every mainstream, every public stream, we have a Polymaker Filament giveaway. The link is in the pinned post in the description. Uh, we will be doing that at seven o'clock, my time, which is three hours from now. Um, we start the, starting the stream a little early today uh, because we have a guest and that gives us enough time to um, to um, go over uh, everything. So yeah, so hopefully um, John says ASA printing today. So the idea is Pooch is bringing a Prusa enclosure. Um, his farm is going to have all Prusa enclosures with Prusas in them. Um, I will get an opportunity to check it out uh, without me having to find a spot for something. <laughs> so um, we will hopefully use that then as an opportunity to do our first prints on this in ASA. So, uh, Bob, I, I believe the rain is almost done here. Um, in the Sacramento area. We're s predicted to get some rain tomorrow, but only like 0.3 inches. I'm hoping it's less because I have the shed being installed on Friday. Um, is the crows and stuff audible through the <laughs> through the stream? Uh, who else have we got? Daniel, hey, Phil, hey, Kelvin, BBs. It's getting a little soggy now. Yeah. How many rolls of filament for the RC Dotson? That's a good question. I would set aside a full roll of main color, a full roll of black, and then like half a roll for everything else. So, Victor, this is the full Mark IV upgrade kit. The only thing that isn't replaced, only things that aren't replaced, are the frame, the power supply, the Y carriage and bed, um, and the X and Y rods. Everything else is swapped. So new Z steppers, new X and Y steppers, whole new extruder, display, control box and controller. So. Hey John, welcome. Hey lucky boy. Uh, won't be about three in the morning in the UK, but entering the competition to try and join the Polichet Club. There you go. Uh, hey, Tuxedo. I checked in on my daddy's in San Diego. How is the rain still going in Southern California? Had a busy, busy day at work today. Hey, zombie. Welcome. Try to tag you to do any chance to try zero build at some point. Um, there's always a chance, but it's not on the docket. I, I mean, when I, when I run out of things to do, I'll be going searching for things to do. I don't know when I'm going to run out of things to do. Hey, Pezlis, welcome. 
Almost time for toothbrushing and the... Oh, <laughs> the fat rig will at least be moving by the weekend. I'm not going to try heating the bed until I get the EcoFlow I'm planning on. Nice. I am not going to be uh, moving the, the, the Phoenix this weekend, but I am... I was going to... My plan was on Sunday after stream, I was going to spend a few hours filming content on um, Phoenix and the questionable power kind of killed that. So instead I went out and put every spare rock and heavy thing I could find on the tarps that I set down to try to mitigate the mud um, in the area where the shed's gonna be built. So, um, wow, that should probably be, the, be audible. That is a whole flock of crows flying by. <laughs> you have your garage door open yeah yeah the garage door is very open um here let me just get a i think that's probably a safe view <laughs> all of the the outside so is there an actual car in your garage oh no this car used to park in my garage it's a bit dirty right now with all the rain and and stuff lately but um, I pulled a Nero 3D and cut my tool head wires too short. Uh-oh. Yeah, that's that's where my car's been parking. But, yeah. Nice, uh, bright, bright, bright outside. <laughs> uh, brownouts are worse than blackouts. Yeah, so I went and actually installed the UPS that I'd bought for my server a few weeks ago. Um, <laughs> and then spent half the, half the evening fixing the um docker service failure um that happened um which was coincidence in unraid um it only took a couple of minutes to fix but it took a little bit to figure out what exactly i had to do so yep that's my subaru still raining and now snow and like arrowhead okay and I, I had a print saved by my ups yeah i don't have enough ups's um uh, I do have a couple of printers on them, not all of them. And then I probably need to get more. Apollo says Costco has nice deals. That's where I bought my my last one. I got the APC Sine Wave 1500. Um, not APC, the Cyber whatever. They had it on sale at Costco not too long ago. So. <sighs> wow. Were the, were the crows there loud? Because they were really loud to me. Um, cyber power. Yeah, that's it. No damage to the house. Uh, we didn't even have an actual power outage, um, be, beyond the flickers that we had during stream. Um, it was just uncertainty. So I didn't start any prints. I didn't make any progress on the Milo. I didn't do any filming because I didn't know it was windy. I mean, it, it was storming like crazy, but yeah. Hey, Makiora. Network is on UPS, three printers on UPS, everything else just out of luck, yeah. I'd look into EcoFlow also. They have some nice and spendy backup systems that aren't really a UPS. Hmm, interesting. Okay, let's make some progress on here while we wait um, for Mr. Pooch um, to arrive. He is still right about where the ETA is, so he should be pulling up any moment, but... Let's go over to the, ins oops, not that one. Let's go to the instructions. So we left off on the Y carriage and heat bed assembly. Now I wanna get this, um, finish this so we can check out the enclosure and get a print going. And then we can kind of just hang out and chat um, until filament giveaway time. And then hopefully tacos. We'll see if we do tacos or not. But uh, we did this. So we did the bed, we did it's the Y carriage and the bearings and and installed that. You can just scroll through here a little bit. Hey, Jaws of Joey. I do need to slowly collect more UPSs. I need a small one for my network closet. It's one of those little structured um, in-wall, normally for like security systems. Um, it's not a full rack, so I need something slim that I can put in there. It doesn't have to be very high capacity either. It just needs to be for the for the flickers. If the power's out, then the power's out. But 
anything that flickers would be um, protected and surges. So, okay, we went through all this and there's the instructions cover um, whether you have the new Y carriage or the old one. So extra stuff here. Um, and we got the belt on and then tension. So um, I'm curious, I'm curious what Pooch will think in terms of the tension. I think it's pretty close right now. Um, we had trouble tuning these with my phone before because it just wasn't picking up right. So I'm gonna leave that and see what see what Pooch says. Um, and then um, we did not align the Y pulley though to make sure it was aligned on the on the pulley. So back here, you watch this and you move the bed and it appears that I need to move the pulley this way. So. For Trident 2.4, what print speeds do you need to worry about extra maintenance and less layer adhesion? That's a great question that I don't really know at what point you have to worry about that. I think I think at the point where your printer's shaking itself to death is the point I'd be worrying about um, maintenance. And and maybe maybe that minus 25% or something. I don't know. That's made up numbers. Um, these oh there we are okay so i'm gonna loosen that one bring it over here loosen that one this in just a hair move this and make sure the belt isn't rubbing on the oh okay well that's a problem now it's now the pulley is rubbing on the stepper, which means it's way too far. So I'm gonna pull that off just a little bit so it still moves smooth, and then figure out where else this might be causing a, um, a shift. And it's gotta be in where the belt's attached to the bed. Hey, Shammy. Um, I got my radio today. It comes with so many accessories. Uh, mine shipped. I don't know when I will actually get it, but it has shipped. Let's turn this over on its side. Look at the belts in here. And I think that's where the problem is. Let's see if we can get a little bit of a view, a view here. So if we look at the, okay. Um, there we go. You see that belt not fully in the, in the groove here? I'm gonna push that in. Um, I'm gonna try to just push it in. And I think that's what's causing my, my belt rubbing issue. So. <sighs> The case is nice. That's good. Hey, Nexus. Hey, Steve. Poity, welcome. Switching the phone. Need to supervise the toolbox work. Nice. Okay, let me find just a small screwdriver. And see about pushing this. See if I can get some leverage on this to push it the rest of the way in. Now this is compromised by the fact that screws in there. So I'm hoping I can get some, something. There's Mr. Mr. Booch. I gotta see if I can get a little bit of driver in here. Actually, there he is. Go. Yep. Go, go, go. 
The producer says they have sold more MK4 printers than any printer before. Wow. That's a lot. I did see the blog post. Was it today? I'm still looking forward to my <laughs> MMU3. Nothing else. And check it out. Um, but. Okay. Let's see if that shifted it at all. Oh, see ya, bunny. Take care. Hey, Jay. Okay, let's see. It's still not where I'd like it to be. Maybe, maybe. Maybe I can get on here and... Oh, that shifted a little bit. Just loosen the... The bolts that hold it to the to the thing and see if that is enough. Hey Chris. I think that's about as good as it's gonna get. Oh you gotta pull up. <laughs> yep. The door handle's halfway broke. <laughs> You gonna bring stuff in? Uh, okay, it's in the truck. We yeah. need it right now. Well, yeah, it's up to you. Here you go. It's off right now. Okay. Welcome. Thank you. <laughs> Sorry I'm late, everybody. No worries. No worries at all. We no were just kind of looking, checking over previous work. Sent me a nice, unique way this time. I've never been. Sent me over the river on the world's rustiest old bridge I've ever seen. Really? Where? Just took me on five over Jaboom Road or whatever, and I've never gone Avoiding that way. traffic? I think so. Huh. I think so. <laughs> All right. Here we Can are. You hear me okay? Are you turned on? I think so. Yep, you are. Awesome. Welcome. What I miss? Thank you. Nothing. Okay. Um, I, I did my ten minutes worth of greetings, and <laughs> you haven't done the uh, the emblems yet. That surprises me. I was I was letting oh, you, you were do wait, that. You were waiting. You were waiting for yeah. the honors. Well, you even blame yourself when they're crooked. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that'll be fun. Okay, good. <laughs> cool. Uh, okay, who do we have here? So we have everybody. Hey, Alex. Hey, Doom. Okay, so what I noticed mm. is just kind of going over last work. Last last stream, we got the white carriage in. We got um, other wiring, the mm -hmm, display. Mm -hmm. But what I'm noticing is the belt is right there. If I move the pulley any closer to the stepper, it rubs. Um, so I think it's in here somewhere, but it is moving okay. Interesting. It's, yeah. Oh, you know what it might also be? We can probably. And you're right, you've got, Shift. The, you got the two bearings on the left side, which is correct, if I recall. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But I think there might be just enough that uh, a little bit. wiggle room there. I don't know. I tried it. Oh, and I wasn't showing any of that, but I shifted the Y stepper mount over. Here. Yeah, it's right at the, hey, Fuller, right at the edge of that bearing, or the hey, hybrid. pulley, huh? Yeah. Interesting. I wonder if the dimensions of this ended up different. Like, is it a little too short? Well, what, what I was thinking is I the, um, I think the belt in there isn't in there quite all the way on that one. So if it was seated and more... And I've, I've spent some time trying to seat it, but the little screw that locks it in mm. goes in from there. Mm -hmm. So I'd have to take it fully apart to get that in there. I, I think that's well within the realm of good enough i know it's not steve standards but i, I would say it'll <laughs> at least get us operating and i don't think that's going to affect the auto homing or any any of that but we'll find out i guess when we fire it up well supporting that i don't think it's actually rubbing i think it's just right there at this point because yeah. when it moves you can't you can't yeah. feel it and it's not um, it's not wandering it's not wandering at all i think it's just right there well i'll take that stop <laughs> stop back feeding the board I was slow. It was slow. It was slow. It was slow. <laughs> uh, try Pano Tuner for belts. The most luck with that one. It's available for Android and, and iOS. 
we don't see yeah so i'm just inspecting your work from last week here you got the next shooter together it looks mm -hmm. really good i'm i'm such a fan of this uh, galaxy black asa yeah nice hey randy hey redacted what did you think of this new uh the idler uh the tensioner mechanism um I have never actually adjusted it on yeah. my Mark IV. Yeah. Um, the interesting thing is that these sprung, spring-loaded screws yep. thread into plastic. I know, and I and that that I noticed that as well. I, There's I, a number of things that thread into plastic, and I've told you before mm -hmm. that's kind of my pet peeve, but yeah. it, it works. So that is a uh, an eyebrow eyebrow raising decision there, but I think it's from space constraints. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, so the- It's certainly from that and, you know, having something like that machined, I guess, is your own, because it's such a small, the geometry on that piece is so tiny. Yeah. If you were to crank this tension up all the way at some point- Oh, it would definitely strip. Yeah. Yeah. Especially if you do it under tension. Mm -hmm. Anyway, I think it's, it's a pretty clever design though. I like it. And definitely you can see why uh, flexibles work better given you get that fat wing mm -hmm. profile. But moving away from the dual geared extruder, mm -hmm. which I think, you know, we think is gra great for grabbing, but I guess it's more about surface area on the yeah. side of the filament. I'm, this is where I'm a little weak in the extruder design department, but yeah. I find it interesting. There is water there in that for you. What do we, oh yeah, awesome, yeah. thank you. So. Um, how dangerous is back feeding the board by moving the bed? That's debatable. Debatable. I mean, you see, did you see John Schoen, uh, mm -hmm. proper printing, mm -hmm. sat there and moved the tool head as quickly as he possibly could mm -hmm. and couldn't fry anything? Yeah, I, maybe it's maybe from older times, something we we're, yeah. were just fearful of that yeah. maybe it's not as big older a deal. Older step sticks. I think there's uh, protections in place for it. I don't know. Um, use a printed belt gauge. What do you think of the belt tension? On With your experience in in, in belts, like a like an A, feels pretty good. Let me see here. Now, you have you played with the app yet? The I did the actual I, it, tuner? it was so inconsistent when we did it on stream. Was it? It was, it was terrible. I couldn't get good results. I wonder. I, I wonder, like. The noise, the environment, and the variance between uh, phone microphones and stuff like that. Like it is a different phone. So when I did my Mark IV build, yep. it worked fine. It, mm -hmm. it was fine. It was fairly consistent. I set the tension with it, um, but that was a different phone. I updated to the 15 this last fall. You would think, but it was here in mic. the same hmm. acoustic environment. Yeah. Hmm. I mean, I, I would say that feels good from what I expected. Like I, I can always like I'll squeeze it together and see like how much resistance I'm getting. Like it, it fights me a little bit. Oh, but... the camera doesn't like your shirt at all. Look at that. <laughs> Whoa. I didn't think about that. <laughs> that is that is interesting. Should I just strip here, over to the end of my black? Should we just go black? <laughs> it's up go to you. It doesn't. I don't think it's well, a big deal. Well, we don't deal. want to wake weird people out here. <laughs> how about that? There you go. You didn't know it was going to be Here, that let me close. Of, that oh, kind of stream. Did, did you, you want to bring in? Yeah, I'll the, grab that the, and then I'll close the door. I'll grab that, sure. The crows were pretty freaking loud earlier. The crows? Yeah. There were a whole flock of them flying by. Mm. <laughs> oh, did I miss anything? Um. Yeah, there's not, uh, Rod said the heat set inserts, but there's not room there for for heat sets. It's It's within this little spot right here. That width, which is only, let's see, that's about 11 to 12 millimeters wide. So. <laughs> hey, Brent. Awesome. Can you make it through safely? I think so. And set it wherever you want. Tuck it under the. Right uh, there's. Oh, yeah. Right here is good. Fine. Yeah. Let's put it on top oh, of that'll go too. Right on top of the Milo kit. Okay, I'm gonna close the garage door. The Milo it's happening. Too... That's gonna be fun. A couple of weeks. Yeah. Yeah, I'm uh, really interested in that. That'll be cool. 
This is the this is the year of C and C for me. I think. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I was uh, I was down at Carbide. Oh, right. Two weeks ago with mm -hmm. uh, Winston, and mm -hmm. uh, now I'm like, oh, I gotta get me one of those Chapeau <laughs> Ghosts. <laughs> I think. I got some in, an inside five. track on the 5 Pro oh. and some other stuff they're working on. Because I was looking at the, what is the HDM, the one that's like mm -hmm. the heavy, heavy-duty yeah. one. But losing all that build volume. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway. PF Dennis, thanks for gifting memberships. Okay. Let's move on let's to build, build. next thing. Aligning the belt. I just did that. It's aligned enough. Now sure. we get to put in the little expansion joints and get the bed on. So. Yeah, these are new for four. Or at least... Uh, you know what? They're they, new for four. They they did a series of mount upgrades in the three, like what the current working ship shipment with three was like. This actual plate, the newer version of it's a little different, where it's not cut all the way through. It's more of a, a recess, and then they they started using these little uh, uh, metal clips instead of those U bolts and mm. the in the. So it's interesting to watch I'll, the design evolution. I'll find out. I have a three on the way, apparently. And a lot of this, you have a, a new three? Mm -hmm. like, or a, mm -hmm. a... Oh, here they are. Yeah. Yeah. Wait, so you ordered from Prusa? They're sending me one. Interesting. Oh, is it to do an upgrade on? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Good. I was going to actually ask you about that later. Oh, screen. Um, so here's would be a... so tragic to hear crows on the stream. Go to the overhead. Oh, here we go. So the new bed mounting mechanism. These are the expansion joints they're calling them. So instead, there used to be a spacer, like just the the yeah, uh, just the little one of these steel sleeve spacer. One of these. Yeah, and I guess uh, this well, one I find it makes the install installation a lot easier because we're basically uh, sliding these guys in and then we tap straight into right there. to these parts, which is cool. So you'll see here, there's a. There's a bit of a C channel, so that allows you to set the screw, slide it over, tighten it, and then when we actually put the bed on, and it's supposed it to allow for some expansion, and heat some expansion, thermal expansion, thermal and expansion, traction in the whole thing, which is really cool, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, thermodynamics is rad stuff. Uh, so yeah, that. So uh, we're gonna set those now, right? Yes. So for that, we need some of the uh, the M. Three, I think they're so M three by six, um, yeah, button heads, and they may be in still in packages, so they might be uh, let's see. They're might be tiny, over in tiny, there. Tiny, tiny. So let's see. These are M three four B. Not sure why they there they are. Where they come up with the nomenclature? I know this. it's different from what six we're used to. R is not. Yeah, I don't, I don't know who's. Steve's asking what we what I think of the Mark three point five upgrade, and I don't know yet. We're going to find kinda, out kind of the point is it, to check it out. It literally see what's dropped. involved. Yeah. yeah. Well, listen, after going through all of this, so I'm hoping I should have one on the way as well, because I've done the four, the three, nine mm -hmm. now. And then now that the three five is available, three five is just the, the board and the LCD. So you get input shaping, uh, you get Wi-Fi, right. uh, you get yep. uh, wired network, wired network. Mm -hmm. Um, 32 bit, obviously. And so, you know, the question being is it, and I'm just loosely setting these in place. Yep. Uh, everything except for the center hole, guys. And I lived in SoCal. There's a flock of African parrots that got released from a pet store fire. Oh my. They bred and took up residence near LA. Wow. Oh, is that down by, um, I know where that, I think I know where that is. What's the, what's the big outdoor auditorium that's right there? I don't know. Uh, I'm, not, I'm not super good I'm at not, LA. I'm not either. And there's an observatory, Griffin Observatory, that whole neighborhood, and there's some parrots around there, if I recall. Maybe I'm, I'm getting it wrong. Anyway, to finish my uh, thoughts on the 3.5, given how much time it takes to rip a 3 down and go through that, I mean, it, seems, the fall. it seems like bang for your buck-wise, right? Like... Maybe you're not getting the next extruder, but how good is it for the money you're saving and the amount of time you're saving to just put the three five in? If I can keep my revos and you know all that other stuff, so that's going to be interesting. I know where that oh. neighborhood in LA is now. I'm curious. Yeah. He did a he did a fantastic job with all of this. Did I? Yes. Of course you do. I'm glad to hear. 
I mean, not surprised. Hey, Brian. Ballistic Tech. Welcome. Hey, Jason. Hey, Ballistic. Eight inches, eight inches of rain, Bill? I wonder how much we got here. Dude, it was raining Did, like How was mad. it up in your neck of the woods? We lost power yesterday for a, like lightning hit a transformer at like four in the morning. I woke up to it. So I that, need... There we go. What do you need? Something need smaller? A lower profile that'll fit through. Oh, I got that. Here you go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's the way. Uh-huh, uh-huh. I like it. Now, there is an alignment... And I, I, get, I think the newer version oh, of this plate actually has some machining uh, yeah. in it that helps with the alignment. I, re I remember that. Yeah, you'll see there's some now, pockets here. But this we don't this have was going to say the installation needs to be done carefully. So yeah. Make sure the expansion joints are correctly oriented. That's right. So they there are pockets. You see these pockets on the new one, but it should have... Let's see if there's a... So what we're going to do to be... So we're going to do this. You know, we're going to basically run parallel with the profile... Point them all towards the center. Point the, like, this part? I think it's just a question of being consistent. I'd, Correct. It wasn't saying which yeah. way to... Because if you look at the picture, they've actually got the um, mm -hmm. the entrance like this. Yep. But just in line with the center is what I meant. Yeah, I got you. Yeah. Sure. I, I, I don't know. I can't imagine that. That feels pretty nitpicky, but may, maybe. I guess if you're... If we're, well, if they're if designed to flex, then expansion. it does matter. Right, but it'll still flex. If, if it's if it's it's not going to flex this way as much as it's going to flex that way. Yeah, I guess so. Yeah. That's above my pay grade. <laughs> hey, Retromaker. I'm shortcoming, shortcomings to a honeycomb system. Makes modeling straight borders problematic and is limited in choice of shape and size bush garden in san fernando valley oh is that where That's parents escape from there. there okay yeah let's <laughs> see can you go back to that last picture i just wanted to see the orientation on the end these end ones yeah so yeah it's got to turn this this way here all right i know um Joe is very proud of this because when I was I spoke to him at Open Sauce mm -hmm. um, last year, mm -hmm. and one of the first things he asked about is what I thought about this new bed mounting system. Mm -hmm. I dig it. After I'll tell you what. After I mean, harkening back to the traumas of the uh, Mass Mark III build I did when I put the farm together originally, this way. Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, just seeing little creature comforts, like I said, getting away from those U-bolts, those things were a pain, uh -huh. the clips, these little, uh, pads. Yeah. The U-bolts are terrible. Now, I'm not a, like, mechanical engineer. I understand, like, we see these three points of contact for creating a plane. Uh, and my understanding is like I, when you go to four, like you create a binding opportunity that you don't have with three. So that's the reason that they use three bearings. And I think it's more like for this. not necessarily. It's more for that for not um, binding as much. Yeah. You basically have these two that are controlling the bed, and that one is keeping it stable. Yeah, I don't know if you notice. Uh, do you, you do you have an XL yet? I don't know if you've seen the XL yet. The the way they do the mounting for the XL plate was interesting too, because it's similar. Where in the Z, it's bolted, it's fixed on one side, and then there's a pivot, so it can kind of there's a cantilever okay. on the other side, um, which I assume is a similar. I don't know what that that property is. Somebody that is more experienced in mechanical engineering, maybe can comment on it. Um, Rod, there it comes with a new spacer for the center. I imagine it's probably the same dimensions it's as not, the. It's taller. I was, I was just gonna say I have an original one, so we <laughs> could actually out. measure. I, I, I kept the seven and another's nine or, or okay. Two. Maybe shorter. Let's see, Let's see what the. It's difference. either shorter or it's taller. Okay. <laughs> but the originals, the, the originals were five and a half. Yeah, and I think those are. Seven. Yeah, they are definitely taller. Eight. Eight. Okay. Yeah, so you don't use an original one or you're going to have a bad time. No, and in fact, that's part of why, you know, you really do strip this thing completely down to the frame to do the four upgrade. 
Slide this guy out of the way slowly. Back feed. Go to have this oriented properly. Hey, Latian. Hey, Ken. Steve likes multiples of three. Yes. yes multiples of three. I know all the Stevisms. You didn't already. I thought you already had a Mark III. You do? They're just sending you another one to do the upgrade on that. Um. They they asked if I had one mm -hmm. that I could um, use to upgrade, mm -hmm. and I said I have one, but it's been converted to a bear. Oh, that's and right. And then they right. said I'd get fired if I sent that to you, this to you for that. <laughs> and <laughs> uh, yeah. All right. And then and then that, that guy a, goes in the middle. Yeah. So, so let's go. We gotta what do we, we say? So come down here and then it says here we put it in the middle mm -hmm. yep. and then we set it over there gently and we do the center. That's right. And then we do the... And the, remind me which screws. I'm fairly certain it's these guys. The only little off the flat heads. M3 by 4BT. Yeah, these are technically a Torx. Oh, they are. I have, I have the tools. We have the technology. I have the tools. Okay. Got all that, those there. This one right here. The little tiny baby Torx. Is that too big? I think you nailed it. First try. Love it. Nice. Nice done. Nicely done. Yeah, we're seeing more uh, designs move toward Torx from Hex, which yeah, kind of nice, I guess. Maybe, except for we need whole new sets of tools potentially. Okay. See you, John. Okay. Oops. Uh, Let's pull the. There you go. All right. Just. And at least you only have to worry about one of those staying in place. Yeah, so... Let's go up here. I'm going to do my little eyeball. Yep, that's what I do. You watch it all the way down and... Stay on target. It's the thermal exhaustment for the uh, Mark IV right there. <laughs> Start. Sure. Let's see, now that one we need... What do we need? Uh, what screw is that? that it's is not the a, same? Oh, it does no, need to be a longer one. It's a different flathead. Yeah. Um, it's one of these guys. M4, M3 by 14 BT. Yeah, and yep. you got an extra two. It was nice too, they started labeling, hey, you have a spare have one, a spare. so you don't panic. I didn't use that all you of have these. Extra, oh my gosh. <laughs> that, that can really stress people out, so I think that's a nice service. See, now this is what I'm talking about. You gotta get, I don't know man, like ball driver. Is this overkill? Do you really need a Torx for this application? Somebody in the chat tell me why going to Torx I'm, from I'm, a hex. I have no idea why they, if they, matter. if they went hex everywhere else, why is it Torx here? Is it just availability in that size? The only thing I can think of is since it's so short. Oh, are these, if are you these were, undercut? If you were, they're flat heads. Yeah. I just wonder like dimensionally, if you were to cut a hex into this, I mean, they must have hex heads that are yeah, really short yeah. or flat. I have no idea. I, I, Reliability of manufacturing? I don't know. Yeah. Availability? Availability? I mean, typically Torx is less available, less available. and more expensive, I right? Think and, about the 3.5 upgrade, but my 3S Plus has a Reva on it. I guess the question would be, and is that a problem? No, it's if, not, I mean, that's part of the reason the 3.5 could be appealing, I think. Now, what but I the, don't know the answer to yet is if it's been tested with Revo, because Revo has its own uh, fork of the firmware. Now, does like it? The thermal, oh, okay. the thermal model, okay. uh, at least on the Mark III ecosystem firmware, I'm hoping that there's been work on that, obviously, on the because the, there's a non-trivial amount of people that have Revo setups now. My, my question would be is, did you have to do any firmware changes to the Mark III S? And if you didn't, I, then I did. it would probably work. But I if you did. did, then that would be a consideration. It's it's a... They said in a, the firmware Revo isn't supported yet. So there we go. Okay, all right. There you go. There's the answer. Brian's trying to get you into the Star Wars jokes. What you got, you've Brian? switched off your targeting computer. What's yeah, wrong? Yeah, yeah. Going, Use the force, going to manual. Use the force. <laughs> Always with the force. Um, what is it? Forces with me. One with the force and the force with me. I gotta be careful not to move that too fast, or I'll get yeah. a He's sideways look. He's the board again. 
watching the L the LCD flicker while you do that. Ooh, ooh, do ooh. these do that? I don't think these do. Yeah. Did that cross a little bit? I don't like it did. I didn't like what I was feeling. What right. size is that? I might have an actual driver. One with the force and the forces with me. One with the force and the forces. Is this me. it? This is what I'm talking about. Yeah, they, you gotta have the driver sets. That is that is a fat boy. If that's no, not the missus. Yeah, now you give it to me after I've done them all. We'll just, we'll just give him some Uggaduggas. How about that? Uggaduggas. Is that the right one? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> this is like, I just, it's such a pet peeve. For, you know how many Allen keys I've collected over the years? Like the first thing I do I now, because I have so many tools, I just toss yeah. them. What a waste. But it is nice that Prusa like does pay attention. And I do like it when. Not everybody they has give them. You the tools. Right? They can't ask you. Do you have these? Yeah, yeah, I don't think it's, yeah, it's fair to assume that everybody's going to have Torx, but another pet peeve, like why, you know, when bomb optimization, like, do we really need 50 different types of screw? That's true. Mm. I'm still a member, Andrew. YouTube is suggesting I become a member, but I have the star. You have the star. I don't know how that works, Andrew. I'm already so a member. I, think, I, I think you're okay. I'm already a member. Did you, did you tighten them in this order? I did not. Let's see. Well, let's see. We did the center first. Center like there, that, then true. it would just be loosening and tightening the corners. We'll redo the corners. How about that? Yep. So it, everybody's happy. To the middle. That'll work too. Could do that. I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, corner. Corner. Uh oh, looks, I see some exposed hey, copper cookie. here. I know, what'd you do? Looks like we got a little rubbish. It looks like it's actually been used and in a farm. Well used. <laughs> Very cool. Okay, heat bed cables. I got a printed part. We got our cables. There's a printed part. Mm -hmm. I was working with some. Uh, carbon fiber infused parts oh, no. today and they're very abrasive to the point yeah. where it's like you know it's like uh, filing some down and it would rub against me and just take some skin off okay so Hazards of carbon we have fiber. this part and an m3 by sixes and then we have power terminal screws the terminus okay so, so that goes there let's see oh and you we... didn't give us a whole lot of the nylon to work with here that's that should be good though okay so Gave Everyone it, goes through the hole. what it gave me. All right, let's go through the instructions that we're going to follow here real quick. I still blame you whenever I can. <laughs> um, we need to find some of those. I mean, I truthfully, think... it's probably something I did. Yeah. Blame Pooch, right? There's no blame Steve. No. I mean, did you see the thumbnail? I did not see the thumbnail. You didn't see the thumbnail? Yeah, I saw the one from last week where you're like, <laughs> what the heck is this? You didn't see the thumbnail. I'm going to show you the thumbnail. So these are for, what are these Whoop. for? These are for the power uh, Oh, these are for the, um, let's see. I was thinking you were handing me the ones for the cap. Are you ready? Cap. And up over there. Uh, blame Pooch, there it is. <laughs> On the hair buzz. Perfect. <laughs> All right, I am attaching, let me go over to the shoulder cam. I am attaching the thermistor for the bed. I did for the MME3 to come out next month. Click. Yeah, I never actually used my MMU2. I set it up, I rebuilt it a couple of times. I never actually used it. I did. I like it. I've got a pair of them that I'm gonna upgrade to the threes once the, the kit's fully functional for the Mark IV. Who's excited? Hey, Justin, welcome. We are all excited for Rocky Mountain Rep Rep Festival. Rumor. I need a Phillips head, please. Thank you, sir. Oh, that's a, that's a Prusa official one. Mm hmm. That's all right. Uh, probably an original we're doing Mark III. Negative three. on the left and positive on the right. Yeah. I have so many of these Phillips head screwdrivers, it's not even. How fast can it print? Um, I don't know what the actual default profile speeds are. Well, I mean, so much of that... Faster than the Mark III. Depend, depends on the flow rates and stuff mm -hmm. that we're, what you're printing, but... It, the I filament would, you pick. I would say if you're just speaking generically, if, if you take the same print that you would have run, like, on a Mark III, 
it is just about twice as fast if you use the speed input shaping profile on the Mark IV. Okay. Uh, and it, that depends on the geometry and a lot of things, but I think it's uh, it's a pretty consistently twice as fast. Um, the other thing is that I swear you can just see visually when you go to 30 bo 32 bit boards like arcs are smoother. Mm. The whole thing is just more fluid, you know. Get the sensor in. Yep, uh, we got we got our uh, bed. That's that's got some uggaduggas behind it. Cable bundle. Uh, it doesn't say anything. You don't actually have to do anything with that nylon cord. You just leave it there, right? So the nylon cord goes into a little hole at the base, right it here. It doesn't say so on the instructions. Uh, it does. Oh, there it is. Right there. There it is. Right there. You didn't do it yet. I did. Oh. Well. I haven't put you the did. cap on it yet. Oh, but it's down there? It's 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 through the hole. So okay. You did. So you I just, stayed on target. I stayed on target. Okay. And uh, I just leave the textile kind of peeking half in and half out. And we'll put the cap <laughs> on it. And for that, I think Bob, we need the sixes. Bob is teasing me for letting you work on this. Bob yeah, because I'm going to put it all, all together backwards like I did <laughs> last time. Is it uh, six millimeter? Um, it might be tens on the thing, but honestly, we just need enough to get through the tab. It is in three by six. Yeah. Do you want a uh, driver for that? I mean, this this seems like a super cash stream because you've done the. I mean, the bulk of it's all done at this point. Oh yeah, we're just, we're, we're just cruising very shortly from powering it up and doing the um, power on test, and then and then we'll check out the enclosure and get it put in there and. Oh man, I'm so excited. Get it heated up and I've got some one online. I've got some prusament orange Need in it. the dryer over there. Perfect. The ASA? Uh-huh. Excellent. Mm -hmm. See? I'm I'm glad they already reached out. We were just talking about yeah. three five. I got it going in the IVOS dryer. That's a mess over there. Don't pay attention to that. <laughs> there get... it is. There it is. All right. That's on there. That looks nice and clean. Feels snug to me. You can see, make sure we got... See it. So you kind of got to watch this when you're hooking it up because the... Um, if if the nylon's like twisted too much or whatever, mm. it'll tuck it over here and then mm -hmm. it doesn't quite, you know, extend and stay out of the way that it needs to. But that is exactly that pretty good. what you want to see. And I see you already did... I think we did this part when I was mm -hmm. here last. Yeah, I think so. I think we had the carriage, but you, we hadn't built an extruder yet. Yeah. Point. Okay, so that's on. So verify all the connections. Everything's in there correctly. Let's take a look. You know, you're a master of cable management here. So if we get in here over my shoulder, there you go. double check your work. So we got these big old ribbon cables and... You know all these by heart now, right? Yeah. <laughs> yep, 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 yep. Uh, all your steppers. Yeah, Bob, the Polyphemus, um, I can now say that it does work. Um, I, last time we looked at it, I hadn't used it yet, but I have used it a couple of times now and it is, it is effective. So, as a dryer. Yeah, and you notice, did you start to peek around and take note of like what some future expansion opportunities are? There's some, I haven't like, looked super plugs. close at that actually. Some, some unused plugs. Unused this I guy appears for MMU, and then oh, okay. I think we've got some extra thermistor options. Uh, uh, and so you could hook up like a chamber thermistor in the enclosure. Yeah, I, the, I I can't speak to that officially. If it's I'm, in I'm the, speculating just like you at this. If point. it's in the firmware, it would have to be enabled. Yeah, as an option. Yeah, but I mean, man, come away from the days of the INC board going mm -hmm. to Buddy and. What's really cool is the unified firmware structure because the firmware ports, let's see, we gotta get the actual modules. Here, modules in that anti-static bag. Yes, it is. You're going to install that with an N3 by six. That goes on there. Look at that the, inside of its nice little, uh, what is it, the, 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 the carousel tray for the yeah. SMT. Is there active cooling on that electronics box? No. Negative Ghost Rider. But the entire thing is metal now, and there are um, um, 
bosses in here with thermal yes, tape. It does heat to sink to the, to the to the box. It does sink to the box. So if you look at this guy, oh, and I'm, I'm holding it by the edges so I don't get yelled at go. here, but this is an ESP32 based um, Wi-Fi module. This is the same one that's used on the Mini. Uh, the one on the XL is a little different because that has a, a, a remote antenna or it has the ability oh, okay. to have an external antenna. Uh, but we also have the, uh, the option to hardwire for people that are uh, so inclined. And of course we got to mount it on the outside of the box so we don't get interference from the yeah. panel in the box. And it just plugs right in like that and then we just put our little cover over it like so with a smell it's a nice little <laughs> feature all right mag bed catches screws that go flying errantly bob am i doing okay or no i should have I wish there was a way I would You're have making the camera blurry, but that's okay. I would have mounted that upside Focus down thing on to you. trigger you. There's no, <laughs> you can't do no it. no opportunity to do that with one, yep. one screw. Chris has got my back. Just covering that. All right. And then we got to cover the, the electronics. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So very similar electronics cover that you would see on the power supply, which I oh, think you already that's did. That's what I did. Supply I actually did it off, off camera. Okay. So I put so I already the, did the cover in there. Cover on the power supply. That yep. you probably were able to use the one to reuse the one that was already there for the Mark III. I, I don't That'd think be it wrong. Be... I reprinted it. Oh, of course, because it has to match. Uh -huh. Everything has to match. Uh -huh. I appreciate you. <laughs> uh, and then here's the one that we have for now. That's a little bit rough there on that bridging. There. The bridging is. I know, there's Steve. No, we don't. We don't talk mm -hmm. about that. Hmm. <laughs> I do. I do appreciate your Hilbert curve infill though for the texture. Here, I like that. That's a nice. Let's get in close. Whoop, angles. The bridging. The it. bridging wasn't perfect. Focus. <laughs> and it just really doesn't want it there. Oh, there you go. <laughs> I remember to ask Pooch about the nylon filament that attaches to the control box from the tool head. Oh, <laughs> you didn't. You you saw me complaining about that last time. That it was too long. Where you long? pushed it in too far. Oh yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's still sticking down. I mean, you cut it. Mine stuck out. Uh, Just leave it. I think they give you a little more than you need. Yeah. It's fine. It's fine. Everything's fine. Everything <laughs> calm down. You guys need to calm down. Blame Pooch. We nicknamed the bridging Bruno. We don't talk about Bruno. There we go. We don't talk about Bruno. I need, where's your, you need a little, there's your there, Bruno. Yeah. Let's see. All our little My little, that's the, the cookie cad, um, um, I witchcraft, right? That. I love that. I have Isn't that, that. that's yeah. a gorgeous filament. Yeah, they gave me a spool of that at uh, Smurf, I think. Mm -hmm. Is it time for Haribo's yet? It hasn't told us. Oh, right, you notice I had to go buy more. I did. <laughs> You're well prepared, my friend. <laughs> well, so if you guys ever have the opportunity to be hosted by Steve, I highly recommend it. Okay, whoa, 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 calm down there. It's not my fault. So I'm just tipping, I'll let you down there. Yeah. Are we ready to uh, put this cover on? Yeah. It's saying uh, for the electronics, and we three want by tens. tens. Oh. I'm gonna seek some tens. So we're going to do tender up here. And three by sixes. The electronics cover is sixes are here for the for the boxes and okay. the cover is ten. So I'll just throw it here. Get those those in right make there. sure they're through. Okay. Well, how are we doing? Yeah. You know, this is not telling me at all. How many people we have? Huh. Look at this. I don't. I don't see likes. I don't see people. How many people do we have? Maybe it's yeah, 162? 162, right there. But it doesn't tell me likes. Refresh. Well, if I refresh, then it pulls the chat box back in. Uh, I don't know what's going on because it's a little weird. Huh? How many likes do we have? Did you uh, Did you pay your YouTube bill this month? No. 87 likes and 162 people. So we need to get over 100. Maybe yeah. 150. We doing some Polymaker? Yes, at seven. In accordance with the prophecy. <laughs> seven o'clock. Seven. We have enough to go, get to seven. I hope so. Okay, we can, I can slow down if you need me to. <laughs> well, we're gonna do a whole print. We're gonna do a whole print. We're gonna throw it in the box first, mm -hmm. right? We'll talk yeah. about the enclosure. Yeah. yeah, we got we got lots to do. Plenty to do. You guys are happy to chill with us, right? We're just kind of. It's kind of nice to move it a. Extra casual, chill, casual clip. My light counter is stuck at one. Yeah, it, on desktop it doesn't 
one. It doesn't um, refresh automatically. One like, womp, womp, womp. Your first Polymaker show is tomorrow on Twitch. Congrats, Petzlis. Have fun. Hi, Liz. That's so funny. I know, I know folks in chat, but my brain um, basically calls them what I'm reading. Right. Um, unless I'm, I'm used to, like. You got Brian. You more got, used he's to. Not, he's not going by yeah. Sergeant Ballistic here, though. He had something else on here. Ballistic Tech. He goes Ballistic Tech on mm -hmm. YouTube. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Hey, Mr. Oldman. I, I originally, I feel like from Twitter, uh, have him in my mind as Sergeant Ballistic. Yeah. Now you got. Let's see. You got to. Uh, you got to move your. Move the Z axis up a touch. How about. Yeah, we just see the twisty. How about yep. that, guys? Somebody's going to freak out if I. There we go. It's Switching now, to manual. It's seven mode. now central time. Yeah. Yeah, we got to start it up, make sure it goes through calibration. Yeah, that's the key. Do that before we pull out the enclosure. All right. And what's next? Hey, George White. Probably Haribo. Nemo, congrats on getting a membership and you weren't even here. <laughs> you know, I'm okay. curious on the 3.5 if they give you a new thermistor for the bed. That's a good question. Or if they give you adapters. Because I don't know, did you do a 3.9 kit? On no. the 3.9, they just give you an adapter for the, uh, for the, end, the end to go to the new Molex to yeah. DuPont or whatever I'm... Not saying it right, guys. Sorry. We do not have all the stuff for the spool holder because you weren't going to use it. So we're not going to use no. it. No, I don't. Uh, so are we at uh, we're coming bear time? That's my other pet peeve, man. Stop putting spool holders on top of your printers. <laughs> on top of your printer frame. Which, again, like I shouldn't be criticizing Prusa given that I work, there. work for him. <laughs> Is it Haribo time? It is. Okay. What do we it do? Is. It says we get a five. It says you get a red one, yep. an orange one, a yellow one. You get two red ones. Look, this looks like a different shade of red. But I'll say I'll say you're right. Two two red. I got two here. I got a yellow. I don't have any orange. You get any orange from me? I got one green. I need an orange. Oh shoot. We take our we take our there you go. we take our Haribo-ing very seriously here. <laughs> And while we're having a little uh, snack, I'll, I'll ask you, it was uh, Apple Vision Pro released this week, mm -hmm. or maybe end of last week. Mm -hmm. I have thoughts. I have feels. I haven't gotten to play with it yet. Mm -hmm. But of course, going through, you know, internet going crazy, Glasshole 2.0 kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. Have you seen it firsthand yet? I have not. Do you have thoughts? Just I have from no what interest in it. It is way too expensive. It is, it is certainly expensive. I have, it's not even on my, my radar of things I might be buying. This is a tough one for me because I'm a big fan of tech. Mm -hmm. and, mm -hmm. and there's really cool augmented reality application and all that stuff. But I feel very strongly that we're at a Jurassic Park moment here. here let's go here. <laughs> we're at a Jurassic Park moment here where okay. just because we can doesn't mean we should. I don't like that we're just normalizing the idea of just making ourselves into cyborgs yeah you know like that we immerse we disconnect even more and more and everybody's gonna be like, oh, okay boomer you know whatever but i mean did you see the pictures i saw on twitter or something and i'm sure it was doctored or whatever but it was a uh, someone driving a cyber truck with those on re doing something right and like how long until not driving so mm -hmm. yeah but it's somebody at somebody at some point is going to walk into a manhole cover or something with it on and then there's going to be a big old thing about it. Mm -hmm. I don't know, man. I want the tech. I like the idea of tech progressing, but I feel like we're crossing into a place where it's just like, yeah, is this the way? Yeah. The younger generation probably doesn't care as much. Yeah. So maybe this is just me being old. Lots of, lots of sci-fi around this. Tell me, uh, the, tell me the, I'm the, old like, in the chat if you, uh, if you. I've read lots of books. I'm just uh, that bitching and moaning. That it's, are right it's there. Super <laughs> dystopian. Mm-hmm. How's the build been so far? Anything stand out? Well, at, at, at a certain point, once the unbuilding is done, it's a Mark IV build. Yeah. I mean, that's the big thing that stands out for me with this kit is the amount of time that it takes to strip down the Mark III <laughs> to be ready to do the build. 
it mm-hmm. has absolutely got me like I should have just gotten Mark IV kits Mark IV's and new. and just gone from them. the um, from a time value standpoint. Mm-hmm. Um, I think everybody's decision on what their time is worth and mm-hmm. what they want to do. I mean, arguably, a lot of people would just say I would just get fully assembled ones because it is not worth my time to go through the build. It is, yep. takes a good amount of time. Yep. Um. It is neat though to see how it's come, you know, from the Mark III days. It's, it definitely feels beefier. You'll see when we start printing, it feels smoother. It's faster. Having this um, nicer display and I, whatnot. I think there's something to be said for the commitment to the upgrade as well. Mm-hmm. We've put all of the same parts from a Mark IV onto the previous frame, even though the Mark IV has a visually different frame. But it's not really different where it matters. Right. It, it really doesn't. It really doesn't. I mean, I, I think there's the, the tried and true people that are like, I want the silk screen to say Mark IV. I want the build plate to say Mark IV. But like fundamentally, there is no difference. It mm-hmm. is still a Mark 52 build uh, base. There's just a different silk screen on it. And then the frame has that hex pattern and it's cast instead of machined. Um, like it is here. But from a rigidity standpoint, you know, there are people asking, like, is it going to make a difference in terms of uh, input shaping and vibration and negligible? Um, let's see. So what? where are we next on here? What is it? Is it pre-flight checks next? Um, yeah, I think so. Pre-flight yeah. checks. So attaching the steel sheet. I'll have to probably wash this before we actually print on it. Get a little scrubby dub. Yeah. I mean, it would probably hold. Depends on what we're... I wouldn't go full sand, full uh, bed volume thing, but oh, no. uh, we'll, we'll do a small you know, right here. We got a nice weathered think. part of the bed right here. Stuff will yeah, stick pretty yeah. well too. I, I still want, I mean, the it's, I guess it's, well, it's two different sets of yeah, things. Like yeah. this is a certain bracket <laughs> set and this is a set here. Okay. So we put that on. All right. So thing on there, Fingers snap clears. into place, snap we need up. power. Did my power cord wait, 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 we haven't put the, we're we gonna put the emblems on or are we gonna do that after? I mean, it's gotta work. You gotta have the decals. Do you? Well, go black are out. Are we ready? Yep. Plugged in and do the honors. <laughs> nope. It's alive. There it is. Bootloader. It's black and white. 2.13. Oh, nope. there it is. There's, There's some the color. color. No. Uh, we're going to pick English because we are English speaking individuals. Yeah. Why don't we There's old Winky Joe. That? He says, Hi, this is your original Prusa Mark IV printer. Get a, I'm going to get aimed at the. That. I would like to guide you through the there setup you process. You see, okay, you see Joe, the deal. I do. There you go. All right, Joe, take us through the setup process. Self test will now begin to check for potential assembly related issues. We'll see. It's like, how well did you do? All right, it's running the fan tests. So it's powered on the hot end fan, uh, as well as the print fan. That print fan. Print fan, print fan for that it. size makes some noise, huh? You can I've hear heard, it. I've heard good things about this uh, this type of fan. They got a way that's not a Noctua. We got asked that last time, I think. I don't, yeah. I don't think it's Yeah, Noctua. they're Delta. They're all they're Deltas. They're all Deltas now. Mm-hmm. Hey, James. For that, that moves a good amount of air for its size, it seems. Hello, James. Bob is saying they need to enable that darn touch screen. It's coming. Five seconds to touch. I'm a beep. So you got to touch it. Now, load cell pass passed okay. So nice. give it a little tappy. Make Papa Joe happy. Ooh. Oh. Ooh, ooh. I think we need a little lube on the, on the Z. On the lead screws? On the lead screws. Yeah. yeah. It's homing now. Right? That was quite it's a noise. Checking <laughs> its sensorless homing. Now I will say I've seen this through quite a bit of beta firmware, and they've gotten a lot more aggressive about double checking its uh, sensorless homing, um, to the point where it'll actually self calibrate uh, at the beginning of a print. Sometimes if it doesn't I've had feel that like it's. I've had that happen. Yeah. Yep. Not always though. Uh, just sometimes it just feels like, you know what, I'm going to double check that my homing is what I expect it to be. Do you think they'll make Core XY machines that's around $1,000 or close anytime soon? 
Are you talking a, about Prusa? That's a great question. I'm assuming they're talking about Prusa. I would assume so, too. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I mean, let's say the undertone of that question is, are they going to be able to p compete with Bamboo on uh, yeah. Core XY at that price point? Um, I, have no, I have no intelligence. I don't know. Uh, people get mad for me to speak to this, but given the manufacturing horsepower of China and that, like, price-wise can't quite compete with it. I don't think they'll be as cheap, but it's certainly obviously a goal to have offerings for as much of the community as we can. So it'll be interesting uh -huh. to see what's in the works. And that's all I'll say about that. Little lube? It's a little bit. A just little Z -lube. It'll, it'll work its way. It'll work its way. It'll work its way. It just goes a little bit on here. Uh, we're getting checks. This is good. So it's running the nozzle heater test and the uh, heat bed oh. heater test. We have our little light on. I uh, can't quite see it with that angle, but if I... Uh, there's the light for the heat bed. Someone was asking me to please put the stickers on. Yeah, we got to put the stickers on. Okay. We'll, we'll, we'll do that. Okay. So if you buy it from the factory, it's UV printed directly onto the printed plastic. In the case of the upgrades, they send you the little vinyl decals, yeah, yeah. which we'll show you here in just a second. Right here. And you'll notice that the graphics is a little bit different because there's some uh, some circles and stuff that are on the uh, the hot end. But this this guy here yeah. goes like, wait a minute, we have to look at the picture. Is it this way? I don't know, or is it this way? Like that one's side. definitely like that, but you can't see it. Yeah. You, for the hot end for that one. Gearbox Looks alignment. Picture. The gearbox calibration is only necessary for user assembled or service gearboxes. In all other cases, we can skip this. Now we did assemble We did assemble it, one. yep. Before you proceed, make sure the filament is unloaded from the next extruder. It okay. is. Continue. Can you pull out a touch just so we can see yeah. the whole? Yeah. So uh, what it's asking us to do is just to loosen the screws around the box. Um, it says uh, open the door. Okay. I'm going to move this a little more this way. Yep. And, uh, and then it wants us to loosen these screws here. One and a half turns. So one and a oh, half. Oh, Sean, how do you like that vice? Hmm. It is good looking, isn't it? Yeah. Uh, so Sean got that little machine vice that I, I got from Inception Machine in the UK. Oh, really? Yeah. I don't just know talking I, about I it. I'll, I'll show it to you. Uh, I'll show it to you later. I, I, pretty, love a good, I love a good vice. It's pretty freaking nice. Nice vice. It is. Nice yeah. vice. Mm -hmm. So you loosen that? Yeah, we, so we're loosening it so okay. that we remove any potential for binding. And then okay. I'm not entirely sure what voodoo it's doing here to like determine mm -hmm. if it's aligned okay but we hit continue and i can tell you that it's just rotating the the uh extruder gear mm -hmm. it's retracting yeah it's doing a retract move and it says gearbox alignment is in progress please wait about 20 seconds it seems to be moving I, at consistent speed i would highly suggest if they're still talking about prusa core xy's mm -hmm. i would highly suggest if prusa did a small core xy that it be this build site or close. Mm -hmm. So there's a lot of um, speculation around because you've seen the AFS mm -hmm. it has a lot of similarities with the XL, but it's mm -hmm. a smaller core XY. Package. But it's not that much smaller. It's, it's like 280 by 290 is the, is the sheet. Yeah, but I mean, the XL is 360 by 360. So and this is 220... 254 by 210. Yeah, so I mean, but what the actual the... plate is like 240. I really like yeah. 300 for a for a Core X Y. Yeah, yeah. But I mean, I I could get behind that so you because then I can get the plates for my other 300s. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I like 300. I mean, it's an arbitrary number, but it's just about a foot, a square foot. I'm a fan of the 250 size. Mm. Uh, okay, so now we're going to go back and just retighten the screw. So I guess this is just to alleviate any binding. Oh, it is still it's still moving. So it's what? Still it, moving. I think what it's telling you is you want to tighten it as it's doing that. It's, it is, but but it wanted to spin freely for a period without us doing mm -hmm. that. So it and aligns everything, order, settles so we everything. Go, we tighten this one, then this one, then this one, according to the uh, diagram on the screen. 
Now this is actually, see it says tighten the M3 screws firmly in the correct order. They should be slightly below the surface. Do not over tighten. So it's talking about the surface of the plate here and I can see I'm slightly above and I'm just tightening to flush here. I'm talking to you Siri. <laughs> here and it's still rotating and I've done that. This is, um, okay, close the idler door and secure it with the swivel. I guess this is called the swivel. Swivel. Come on. That is snappy snap. Uh, calibration is done. Okay. So this is what I said. This is actually where having a nice uh, full screen LCD is nice yeah. for, for actual walking you through and giving you some good visuals. You, you didn't get that, obviously, on an 8-foot bit display. Right. You'd start without the filament in the extruder. Mm -hmm. So go ahead. So we just it, need a piece, really. Oh. We don't need a full-on spool. Just give me a little snippy. Mm. All right, I got a piece of filament here. We need to start with, uh, we got nothing in the extruder. Uh, no filament in the filament sensor. We're going to continue. Is there filament in the filament sensor? No, there is not. And you can see down here at the bottom. It's heating uh, up. No, it just says that it detects that there is nothing. It says off. Uh, mm -hmm. In this case, there's nothing in the filament sensor. So I'm going to insert filament here. And it, it detected on. it. And now it says on. I don't like yeah. off and on it. But I guess that makes sense. Remove filament. And it's off. And it's calibrated. Cool. The self-test failed to finish. Double check the printer's wiring and axis. Then restart the self-test. I wonder if it's the heat bed. I've had issues with a couple of them where it's picky. No, no. In this you. case, it says it's the hot end fan. Oh, the hot end fan? Didn't like hot end fan is on. Thing about the hot end fan. It's spinning. It's spinning. We might have to uh, just try. Try it again. So everything else is a green check. What's nice is if we go back into the self test menu, we're going to. Uh, we'll do the Wi-Fi separately, so I'm going to do not now for that. It's asking us if we want to set up Wi-Fi. Yeah. Um, but if I go back into settings and... Uh, I'm sorry, I think it's under control calibration. Um, diagnostics. Test fans. Test fans. So I can do individual... Okay, so it just tests. stopped and then it turned back on. Okay. We're not getting a good RPM, maybe, from before? Let's see. That fan turns on. Definitely turning on the print fan. We're moving. No, it doesn't like something about Did the it fail? Fan. Yeah, it failed the hot end fan. The hot end fan? fan? Yeah. Right, let's try something. Just what do you... Fun. Just loosen it? Yep. Maybe it's binding it yep. somehow? The other thing I was going to suggest is maybe we just... Uh, Unplug and replug it into the board. We'll do Let's one, try more, that just for one fun. more fan test. A little. It's definitely spinning. And. It did just change speeds when it fired up the print fan. Is it facing. RPM test has failed. Facing okay. the right direction? So this comes off. Which one is the... Uh, it's going to be one of the three wires. I believe it's this guy right here, the blue, red, and black. Does it? Oh, yeah. Because the yellow is the print fan. So let's try to reseat the blue, red, and back on the bottom one. Here. There you go. And they'll like it when we... But it didn't, it didn't restart itself. So let's try it again. Diagnostic. Threaden it with a mallet. Turn it on and off. Reboot the whole thing? Good. There's not a whole lot we can do about that. If it fails, though. Only thing I can figure is if we have a bad connection on the wire that detects RPM. Is it failing it's, again? It's definitely powering the fan to spin it. Yeah. It just must not be getting a reading. Do we on got attack. maybe something in here? Possible. 
but then that would be one of the bundles of the main you can try reseeding the whole uh love board uh connection yeah yeah, let's go ahead pinch. and, and there's nothing, and power nothing it off. pinched, so we're gonna shut it down. Yeah. Pretty brave of you to plug and unplug it live. Oh yeah, that was fine. That's YOLO, gonna... baby. Now I'm not gonna play around in here, even though there's no high volt well, there is high voltage. There's no high voltage in here. Um there's main but... voltage under here. Mm -mm. That's over there. This just gets twelve twenty four volts. Oh, you're right, you're right. I'm sorry. So I'm just gonna this out look see if we have anything let's just reseat the main connector make sure nothing looks frayed or you got a bad fan somehow could have a bad fan it happens I think it's is it going to stop us from printing that's a good question i don't know Turn. It, usually when you turn it on, it'll say it hasn't passed all the calibrations yet, but I think you can actually over... depends on what the issue is. I think you can still proceed with printing. I mean, it's actually spinning, so it's going to be... It's going to work. Yeah, the question is, will it throttle? I don't know. Obviously, it needs to detect, but I don't know if it's actually throttling oh, up the well, speed. Well, it might throw an error while it's printing. If it uh, can't detect yeah. it. Yeah. I guess we could pull the fan too, but let's power it back on and see if any of that did anything. Okay. Sparks are what we're here for. Waiting for that connect to do them again on one of his streams. <clears throat> I can't see anything pinched. Yeah. Maybe something maybe in, a bad in this. Or a bad tap inside the fan. Yeah. This bearing seems okay. It spins all right. Uh, it's going to make us go through the whole thing again, I guess. Well, let's see if it passes here. Oh, yeah. Not. Okay, so I am getting attack reading on both down here. So I can okay. see it's reading 20, 2180. I'm assuming the left one here is the part fan. 57, 58. Yeah, but RPM I'm still... RPM test has failed. RPM test. I really... Hamster back on the wheel. So let's pull the fan and inspect it. Okay. We are getting a reading though. We're getting um, a reading. I'm trying to that. Why would that be? Yeah, thank you. Let's take these off. Oh, that doesn't help. Yeah, two mount points. Take a look. It wasn't. Height. The solders, solder joints. Yeah. Someone send up the chain signal. <laughs> I mean, you have, well, it's worth it. I, mean, I, I guess can we pull. can verify. We could pull the one off. I can off pull the one off mine. Four, yeah. and we can just see if it's a bad fan. Yeah, that's easy enough. I. What's the scenario, though, where the fan's spinning and it's getting a reading, but it's still not happy? Yeah. What does that that's mean? Weird. It's really weird, right? Can you yeah. get it out of there? Yeah, I'm just gonna move the... You want a little poker? Here comes a hot poker. See you, John. Hope you feel better. My, my, uh... <clears throat> you see those Star Wars bad lip readings? Those are so good. Oh, lovely. We're tucked away behind. You know, here's, here's a question. Hmm. Is it possible to get interference on like one of the wires from something else that's bundled in like right or adjacent something? to it? Because it is tucked behind one of those thermistor wires. I need to use that to release this guy. Hey, all I missed the first hour or so. Have I missed anything surprising? Nope, you're in just in time to to see the mo only notable thing so far. Get a note of which is which here. Which which is which. Okay, that's free. So I'm gonna say I'll do a look this at was the look see at all of the thermistor for the Is it is it possible at all? We have them in the right order, right? It's not looking at 
I didn't put the well, hot uh, end. That's a here. good question. Do you think we go back over did here? Did we do the old swap a roo? Here, the pre-flight checks or the wiring checks. Let me go back to the last page. Okay, so the screening says F fan. No, P fan, which I would interpret to be part fan, is screened for the oh, bottom. Oh, we need to go to the um, X carriage. Is this it? X carriage assembly. Hot. No, it's next to their assembly. What is this? The screening is so tiny on that, but they next are labeled. Next to I've got a light. Got a picture up here as soon as I scroll to it. H fan. Bottom one says H fan, which I would interpret to be hot end fan, and top one is P, which is part fan, which is consistent with what we have. You had the part fan plugged into the P fan. So connect the print fan is the middle one. Yep, yep, that's what it was. Okay. Don't turn off my light. Incorrect color here, <laughs> I, I have to admit, I did not. I did wrong. not consume the right colors. All right, let me take a peeky here. All right. So, do you want to play with that? I'll go grab my fan. Sure. You do that. I will be right back. I'm going to power off my. I'm just inspecting here to see if I see any like broken wires. I do not. From what I can tell, these crimps are good, but there's not a good visual. I suppose if we were going to be really neurotic, we could put a uh, meter on it. It says this is a 0.16 amp. 24 volt DC brushless. Oh, I'm sorry. This is a five volt, not a 24 volt, five volt fan. So there's a, obviously a buck somewhere in the chain, probably on the love board. Huh. Just for funsies, I'm going to Hi, Troy. Gearbox release. Just going to plug it back in and leave it hanging for a second and see if I can, I don't know, just having it free or separated from the bundle makes it free of interference. I don't know. We're just grasping at this point, aren't we? Aren't we? I was just saying I'm gonna I'm gonna just let it dangle free and see if yeah. like having it run so I was going to suggest as well independently good thinking does anything luckily it's hey, one Troy. Of the first things to get tested huh so we don't have to sit through all the other self tests and I have mine. I'm going to check something. If I recall correctly, though, once it's already done the self-test once, if I hit cancel here, I want to see if I go back. Just see, on the that. XL, it'll actually retain, like, what test <coughs> passed and what's it, which it has. Oh, and it doesn't? There's the test fan. Self-test result. Oh. Yeah, see, go. it reset it after. But it doesn't oh. remember from the last time. It's a little bit different than the way the XL does it, but let's sorry, di diagnostics. We're gonna test the fans again. Oh, <laughs> look at that! It's got a little, got quite a little got vibration a little, to little it. Stutter to it, like it's. Uh... I wonder if that's a any kind of canary in the coal mine. Like if at low speeds it was uh, like out of balance, like maybe the bearing shot. Wait, what did it do? It didn't give me a result. These are five volts, yeah. Yeah, five volts. Yeah, that's weird. I think there's a like a balance issue. Which is simply a bad fan. I don't know if they could see that or not. We'll see. I did I didn't yeah, it's it's saying there's an RPM. Something. I I think it doesn't it's probably not spinning as fast as it expects it to be spinning. Let's see if we just swap it out right yeah. now with unknown good because yours is past that yep. test and it has been operational, right? Thankfully we have a spare to debug with. 
So let it hang. I want to see if it does that little jitter thing. Yeah. Yeah, it, kinda, it does. It kind of does. It does. Yep. Let's see if it passes. If it doesn't pass, we're in trouble. Sounds a little different. The the I don't know if you, it sounds like a little higher pitched. It does. It passed. So I don't think this guy was hitting the speed. Yep. The speed mark. So now why might it not be? Is there any? Didn't seem like it was binding anywhere. No. I think it's just a bum fan. Maybe. It happens. Not good enough. What's interesting is, I, you, you know how they give you that receipt of like all the things that uh -huh. they test? Uh -huh. I wonder if the fans, I thought the fans were on there as like, they, and, and, and I've seen their test boards. I mean, they're not obviously assembling a full thing. They've got little test right. boards to check right. it. But wouldn't this be something that didn't pass QC? Or maybe they're not doing it on the fans. I don't know. And it might have... Well, what do you think? Do, we, do, do we want to do this just to, for the sake of getting this thing yeah, finished? Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Yeah, and, then, and then we'll swap then we'll it out swap before it you leave. Out yeah. And, okay, cool. I'll uh, shut it down so we can just mm -hmm. at least rewire. Well, that was fun, wasn't it, everybody? These are the things that happen. See? What a... Um, we've got, oh, Now we've only got an hour and a half until giveaway time. Yeah. What a bummer, though, to get that close, especially if you don't have... I know. Uh, yeah. You know, spare to have to like wait to get a another one though. Mm-hmm. Hey Moose, just got a snowstorm that came from you. How's it going? It's going good here. I think we're past. Where's he? Any major rain? Up in the mountains. Have somewhere? to be north somewhere, right? Yeah, we uh had a heck of a storm the last couple days. A lot of wind. Is it was it super windy down here too? Um, do you want a little? Uh, yes, yes, we had major wind. I always get nervous it's... that I'm gonna like break the oh, installation with yeah. one of these guys. I don't know if I have anything much like, better. Like a little bludgeon, bludgeoning tool. A spudger. Open flag what do they call that? Okay, so I mean AZ moves, okay. so in okay. Arizona. There you go. But we're in Northern California, so up or came from us, we're thinking somewhere around here, but came from Southern California, sure. <laughs> They're saying that, that uh, Pineapple Express, that atmospheric river was affecting the vast majority of California though. Yeah, oh yeah. Look, did you guys know you were gonna get a weather report along with your build today? <laughs> no, you did not. You're welcome. All right, tucking it all back in that channel. Now, I'll tell you something. I like to do, and I'm, I'm gonna go back, and this is the way you actually had it before, but if you're like me. You want your I pot want, end stuff to go in last. I want my pot end stuff to go in last because I like to yep. just take that whole bundle out yep. instead of like doing the whole nozzle swap. I just swap the whole core out way faster, and I've become spoiled by Revo, so that's the closest thing I've got, but I did find some really cool colored socks that match my Revo profile. So I've got red and green and blue, black. Update from firmware 5.01 to 5.10 fixed the fan problem is what Rod's saying. I thought we were on 5.12, weren't we? I didn't see what the, what was the, what was the firmware version? I didn't notice that. I didn't look. Let's get it finished. We can, we'll we look at what. That, we can give that a go, but. No, no, hold on a second. No, I want to see what it says the firmware version is. 213 on the bootloader. Hey, are you his nephew? Flat, and I'm going to go to info, and I'm going to look at my version info, and we are at, oh, we are at 50. 50. 501. 501. Do so we, we want to try that? We could try a firmware Let's update. Let's try it. That'd Let's, be good to know. Yeah. So let's go. I, for some yeah. reason, I assume we were on the latest firmware, and I should not have. Prusa Buddy Firmware GitHub. That's close enough. Um, I'm curious what the bug Prusa would Buddy be. Firmware. There's release. clearly a difference with the hardware, though, right? Because if one fan works, did you just unplug it? Didn't. Oh. This is our good fan. This is our one we didn't. Oh, okay. So we're gonna test you our original for, with a new firmware. Just look for the one with more dust on it. Is mine. Oh, we've um, got a new one. We've got 5.2 5. 5. for oh, original Mark 3. Five for original Mark 4. 5.13. Five, 
So this one is 5.2 coming. This is for the, this is, is for the Mark 3.5. This is the, the release. Okay, this is two weeks ago. So five one three updates to the printer type check, and that's it. Yeah. Okay. So let's get this downloaded, and let me find the SD card or the, the USB, USB drive card, now, yeah. USB drive, thumb drive. <laughs> right, well, before I bundle this all back together, then yeah, I'll just we'll, uh... we'll get that tested outside of there. Hey Vince, welcome. Out events. Okay, save as. I'm gonna throw this on the. Delete that. That fingers, man. Okay, wait. Uh, this is your oops, good fan. This is our original. Save as. I need to look up which way the. There and save. Okay, while you're doing that, I'm gonna put some uh, decals on. Oh. Now, do you have any alcohol here? Wipes. Um, they, it had it came wipes. With, it came with a thing. They might be wipes. in there. Here it is. I want to know the orientation on the screen one, is it? Do we want to get this going? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so I'm plugging the USB stick in and then powering it on. Correct. Here, let's go here. And then it should just come up and ask us. So flash. Yes. And it's gonna go through and verify firmware and flash. Oh, that's, that's a lot of it's soaking. That's a lot of alcohol on that wipe. I've got some um, a little heat gun here. We can help evaporate it if we feel like it need Honestly, it's needed. By the, by the time, it's going pretty quick, huh? Yeah, it'll evaporate by the time. This is what happens when you don't eat the correct Haribo colors when instructed. I know I'm learning my lesson. Hey, Collie. Got back in Welcome. There. Flashing, flashing, flashing the firmware. Whatever's gonna get mad, I don't have the fan plugged in though. Probably not. It'll flash firmware without a fan. I'm thinking about moving my printers into the basement, and installing a carbon filter ventilation system designed for grow tents. Thoughts? I've used those. Yeah. Those are cool. They make and they make huge ones too. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, it's a good way to move a lot of air. They make them in all kinds of different sizes for like everything from like a twelve. Are they inch loud? Duct. Well, the, the fan. It depends on what fan you hook it up. Mm -hmm. But like you can get. They look like an intake mm -hmm. uh, air filter. Like a cut. Yeah. Like if you do one of those aftermarket yeah. barrel style. Yeah. Ones. Uh, but they, they have a carbon filter, and then you can put, like, HEPA socks around them and all kinds of interesting stuff. But that's basically what most of the new filtration systems for enclosures, like the one that we're going to oh, yeah. show here, are using a carbon HEPA combo. Uh, and it works really well. It said, the problem is we mixed EU and U.S. Haribo. Mm-hmm. Yeah. We got a mixture of sugar and... <laughs> and uh, sugar and not sugars. And, uh, high fructose. Corn syrup. Yeah. And we're all out of wax. Okay. What does it say? Uh, it says, please complete calibrations and tests before using the printer. Okay, but that's the thing. Yes. Let's just see what it says here. Version info. Doing it hot. I love it. Why not? We are at 513 with a 234 bootloader. Buddy board 37, whatever that is. Love board. Oh, so it gives us our serial number data now on uh, each of the, the boards. That's cool. Hmm. Very cool. All right, uh, let's let's give it a go. You plugged it in. Yep. Uh, everything's plugged, plugged in. in. It's supposed to be plugged in. It's kind of yeah. not. We're a little dangly, but no, we're not going to do the Wi-Fi right now. And we are going to go to control and to. You know what? That might explain to you why the calibrations and tests. Yeah, now it's consistent oh, with the Excel. Okay. That explains. They updated it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so fan test. That's interesting because it gives us a check mark. It didn't stutter when it started. No, it didn't, did it? Mm -mm. So I guess there's something going on in firmware. Checking for switch fans is good. We're getting readings on each of the RPMs and they're updating a lot faster than they seemed to before. When's the next fan gonna turn on? They're both on. They're just going slow. Oh, okay. 
Oh, oh okay. Let's. Uh, I'm gonna kill it because I don't. Wanna... Yep. It passed. But it passed. Okay. Let's get it back together. Hey, thank you for the heads up. Yeah. On that. Thanks, Rod. Thank that Rod. Rod. That was Rod. 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 Thank you, Rod. That's one that I have a mental. Um... <laughs> you want to call him Ron, but he's yeah. Rod. Uh, all right. So we're gonna. I've met Rod in person at Murph. Okay. And Rocky Mountain. Is that right? Rocky Mountain High. An all black hex drive, of course. Yeah, I like that one. Oh, and I like the I like the infill set. Is this the way it always is? Carbon filters are pointless. They use up way faster than people think. What's that? Now that that may well be true. I I was curious about that. Uh, how long the efficacy of the carbon filters last? I don't know. So when you weren't here, mm -hmm. um, folks here were suggesting that I hide an, a bright orange part somewhere on the printer. Just a mess with me. I, I never wanted, got around to I it. Because I wanted to black the whole thing out, and you're like, no. Mm -hmm. Earth mm -hmm. and Murph. Earth, that was it, okay. <laughs> so that goes between the thumb screws, down through the channel. And then I'm going to put my thermistor and my hot end power cable. Next. That was why, a good. I don't know why they made this channel as tight as it is. It doesn't, I don't think it needs to be, but, you know, maybe. I'm not. I love to criticize other people's designs, but you know, I didn't I don't have a better What were you saying? That was what? I, I, I don't those know. wires. I don't remember. <laughs> Must not have been important. May I ask what infill type you recommend for strong boron parts? So I think the general boron recommendation is gyroid or cubic. Um I use cubic. I'm just I just like I think gyroid, isn't gyroid a slower infill to print? Uh, it can be. It depends. I yeah. think the fastest, if I recall, is lines. Yeah. But, uh, that, I don't know if that, strength-wise, how that compares. But, um... Yeah, I use cubic. Grid. I, I'm, someone's saying stars. gyroid. Stars. Stars. <laughs> someone's saying gyroid's faster, but I'm pretty sure. I think... Um, at equivalent infill percentage... Equivalent does, usage, does, gyroid does, is slower. Won't it depend on the geometry to some extent? I don't know. Like, is there are there are there situations where gyroid could be faster or slower depending on the maybe. That's I know. Pretty, I know. That's surprisingly, pretty that's pretty nerdy. I, I there know, we go. Now it's in the channel. I know um, the oh, yeah. Hilbert curve bottom layers I've been using. Yeah. It is surprisingly not as slow as you would think compared to lines, depending on the parts. Definitely. It's probably yeah. rougher on your uh, on your motion system. Yeah, it's same, changing same, direction. Same type thing with gyroid. The, the gyroid though, at least is it's like, still, it's, it's, still vibrating. it's not making right <laughs> turns though, you know? We'll test your printer's ability to keep its fasteners from backing out. I mean, fundamentally like anything that's got to change like 90 degrees is going to be affected by the the jerk and acceleration values more than like running on a curve yeah yeah all right crisis averted guess there's some sort of some sort of fan bug in the earlier firmwares gyroid is neat for anyone to fill a print with sand or something okay that's true yeah that's true it'll settle all more, the way through. More sand. I saw somebody do a post today was saying like, you know, less infill, more sand for your prints or something like that. That's something were, I need to figure out because for the, for the Milo, yeah. there's a printed container that you're supposed to fill with. Like a like, weight. Yeah. Yeah. I need to figure out what I'm going to get for that. Lead. Well, they suggest like a epoxy granite. Ooh. So, but if you search for that, you get like granite colored epoxy mixes on um like for your uh for your garage floor kind of thing yeah yeah <laughs> on if garage you search for that coatings. on like amazon or whatever yeah epoxy granite all right lead powder take a deep breath <laughs> cobalt some cobalt uh or uranium is uh nice and dense right yeah it's a big block of tungsten like i think some depleted uranium would be nice <laughs> down to the uh Whatever the they put in dead blow the, hammers. The army surplus. I think that's just sand, isn't it? Dead blow? Yeah. I don't know.
beans. It's like a maraca. Sounded funny. I felt like I heard like a textile sleeve like tearing a little bit when I pushed it in there with it. It's fine. It's heavy insulation on the heater wire. <laughs> Steel or lead shot in a dead blow. The front right speed, you'll end up in 1985. Just go into the channel. Epoxy granite is basically epoxy and sand. Yeah. If by look you make the density of infill same as cubic, gyroid ends up being faster. Okay. All right. That's good. All right, let's do the self test. Oh wait, we gotta put our cover back on the love board. Boing, boing, boing. Just put that anywhere. Mm-hmm. Get a little click. Get a little satisfying snap. Oh, snapped. Are we good? Mm-hmm. Okay. You know, one thing I like about the XL is there's actually like a pivot point, so the door actually is like... Just moves out of the way. Open. Instead of that little click thing, that'd be a nice little... Somebody get on that for me, will you? Just got back because I had to leave for a bit. Surprised it isn't in the box and printing it. Well, we had a fan issue. We, we had an issue. We it, had a otherwise, little, it, otherwise, it would A be. little speed bump. Because we've got tacos to get to. But we can put some decals on while it's doing this. We okay, can. We're going to keep that. Um, we're going to not do the Wi-Fi. Did we need to figure out which direction these, control. these things go? Nope, we need to do that too. All right, run the tests. Where's the display? LCD assembly. This will probably show us. I think it's like one of the first things they have you do on the there first. You go. Okay, so it this is inverted. Mm -hmm. So it's got Mark IV at the top. Yeah, uh, reading it that way. Like yep, this. right like that. Like now that. someone said that might not be cut quite in the right spot. I don't know, but. I mean, an RPM speed bump, yes. No, wait, it's, now it's failing the fan test again. Are you what? kidding me? You tightened it too much. Did I? I don't know. Finicky, finicky, finicky. It it seriously just passed it before. Now it's not. Hot end RPM it. test. What the what, man? That's a problem. Hey, Remy. You guys all saw it. It passed the test when we did. didn't have it installed. It's still spinning. I'll try it again. I don't, I guess, power, power it off. Give it one more. You know what it is? It's because you backfed the board with moving the... The build plate. I think you when you turn it on thing, its side, it moved faster than that. You made the whole thing angry. <laughs> it screwed the pooch. It did. Loosening the screws was the other thing mentioned. I did. I did just loosen yep. them. It does not get any looser than that right there. Fan test. Yes. Come on, baby. Give. Hot end fan RPM test. Come on. They're both throttled up to just under six thou. It's failing. What is failing it? It's not happy. And they are running, so it's not like <gasps> you're getting a reading. Everything's on. Correct. Here. Let's do just, this. Just did it. No, 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 no. Oh, what do you, yeah. All we're going to do. Oh, you want to? I'm just going to trick it. Yeah. We're just going to trick it and see if it actually causes any problem. Okay. Do we have to start a screwed the pooch club to go along with the polar tag club? Huh. All right. Doing it again. I can definitely hear that one spinning faster. 
Yeah, see, it should be getting up to like 8,000 RPM. And it wasn't. Mm-hmm. So there's like something wrong fixed. with that we're fan. Not, we're not getting full speed. It's clearly too much resistance somewhere on the chain. Did it pass? Or is it working on it? Yep, they passed. It right. passed. Okay, let's let that finish. I mean, it's possible that in a really... Oops. It's okay. <laughs> Just do that. Let it do it's not fantastic. It's about to be. We're going to let it go through the rest of its thing. Oh, see, I, I made it angry. There we go. It'll. Just didn't want it to crush that yep. connector. Yep. Can you test the fan separately? Well, there's clearly an issue with that fan. Yeah. What we're hoping is that it's not enough of an issue that it's going to stop a print. I don't think it will be. I guess there's a situation where if it was having to run full bore for a long period of time. Alex, we did try another one. So that's why it's continuing the test now. Ground file, the bad fan. Yep. Install Steve's fan to see if it slows down. Maybe there's a physical restriction. So it, when my fan was sitting on there, it spun faster. Yeah, but we, nev we never gauge. mounted it. it was it was yeah. suggesting? I mean, it could be under restriction because could be. It's not blowing. But I'm gonna plug that in. <laughs> Did you try a hammer? Hey, Nero, welcome. Check for voltage drop at least. I don't really have a great way to do that. Mm. Okay, load cell test. Five seconds. Four, three, two, one. Deep touch. Everyone say hi, Nero. Sup, Nero. <laughs> Kaboom. Checking axes. During the test, the heat bed and extruder will move in full range. Printing may vibrate and be noisier during home. The grease helped on the... 100% did. Yeah. <laughs> Try rocking it back and forth for a few minutes. <laughs> Just put a hand crank on it? No, did you see what Taylor was doing to his? Oh, no, I didn't. He grabbed the whole printer and... Rocked it back on the bed thing to prove that it can take the abuse. Oh, on the bed connector. There you go. I like that. He did this. It's a good test. Got his workout. It's a good test. Yeah. Yes, con connector analysis is in the zeitgeist these days. All right. Let me wrap this. Not a good idea to go. try to install it while it's moving around, but we'll have that ready. It goes up and down a lot faster than my Mark 3S. It does It does go up and down a lot faster. It does everything faster, generally speaking. He had arm day with his printer, yeah. And the, machining, and the machine is printing away happily without issues right now. Of course. This yeah. is... Uh... Oh, did, did Joe yell at you for that, Taylor? Okay. Which machine? The the four Mark Four. The Mark Four. Yeah. Did you get it? Did you get a? Did you get a stern lecture? Uh, 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 uh. <laughs> Papa Joe, not happy. Let's see. Weeding vinyl is one of my least favorite. I may have woken up to a DM. <laughs> I'm not gonna look. Once it's done, it's done. Doesn't concern you. Did you see the new Creality Ender 3 Core XZ? It's fast and nice build. It's interesting. Something's missing. What's missing? Tacos? Yes. Tacos will not be missing for the for the entire evening. At some point they will not be missing. Stay on target. Stay on target. Gearbox alignment. You know what? We already did that. I'm going to just... Do we want to do the gearbox alignment? We're going to skip that because we already did it. Filament sensor. We're going to continue. 
Where did I put my filament? It was over here. You took my filament? Yeah. No, there is not filament in the filament sensor. Oh, in progress. Detect. Insert the it filament. is nice they included those stickers. Filament inserted. Continue calibrating. Do not remove filament. Remove filament to finish. Remove filament sensor calibrated. Check, 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 check. Okay, we're calibrated. Now, the question is, do we want to print now or do we no. put it in the box first? No, ASA, first print. Good, all right, full send, I love yeah. it. You're gonna tell me I went a little high here, I think. Am I? Yeah. Let's see. Because I did. Yeah. It's okay, I'm gonna, love it. I'm gonna live with it. You are. You got 20, oh, and you and you, you got the or all. Oh, it's organal. It's the or -ginal. Ortho Orthogonal. I, wait, hold, hold on. Oh, yeah. shoot. The, the eyes. It's the, the, the org. Or. Or. Oh, yeah, that's or -ginal. good. It's the or hmm. <laughs> There's an eye in here somewhere. <laughs> See you, Taylor. <laughs> Thanks for stopping by. It may be gone. <laughs> the eye, is, the eye might, might be, be gone. forever gone to the gods of 3D printing. You always Sacrifice know which printer which we was, built here. Which one was yours? <laughs> okay. Uh, we're not going to do Wi-Fi right now. And that's good. All right. So let's turn it off. And then we'll do the... You're uh, going to do the front? Yep. Okay. And then... I'm going to turn it off. You're going to do the front there. I'm going to unplug this. That really helped. Actually heat it up a bit. There's an eye. Gray there. Sharpie. <laughs> Wait, I see, trying, I see it. I you're see trying it. to. I see it. Do you want some tweezers? We're going to do a little surgery. Uh oh. <laughs> it's right there. Yeah, okay. Some tweezers. <laughs> Who does the printer belong to? This is Pooch's printer. This is my printer. <laughs> It's all fun and games until someone loses an eye. Uh, that's a good one. <laughs> um, and then what was another one? Sounds like a good Halloween brew. There's an eye in there somewhere, in here somewhere. <laughs> I feel like it needs like a clear coat over it or something because it doesn't seem like it would take much for, you know, this eye to when, come off. Or when I reprint mine in ABS parts, I want to do one of the MMU remixes people have done. And just yeah, print it I think with the colors. I think that might be the way to go. The the Hilbert curve doesn't seem ideal here for the well, yeah, the sticking <laughs> there. But hey, you know, it's it is. Hey, that's a good job. Is that eye upside down? Probably. Yeah, it's upside down. <laughs> Probably. Okay, all right. Now let's see if I get see if I get right on this guy. Slow peel. Does Prusa sell the decal separately if you want to reprint the parts later? I don't know. I haven't. I seen would contact it. support I because I bet you you could get you them. Could probably get them, but I haven't seen them uh, on their own in the spare part. But you can tell really quickly if you go to the website and look under the spare parts if there is a decal set there or not. Is that screen printed? It's printed on. I mean, it's it's like it's a um, vinyl cut. No, the on the on, oh, the, the, on the stock one. Yeah, yeah, on the stock one, it's UV printed. UV printed. Okay. Hey, Obi Wan Kenobi. The Obi Wan. Okay, that's there. Awesome. Okay. It starts printing too fast, and the letters start flying start off. flying off. Here's your serial number. Ooh, yeah, we gotta do that. You gotta. Oh yeah, we'll put it in. This, this printer has an interesting pedigree at this point. Yeah. All right, that's there. Um, let me just start prepping it for. Well, so what? So let's talk about what we got. We have the yeah, you the Prusa it? enclosure. Should, I, should I put it up let's, here so we can see it? Yep. Okay. Let's move this guy. All right. So we already side. put it together. Stage it is assembled. Four. It is assembled. This is a pretty easy build. It's a box. Um, Looks like I did print a some billion screws, some at least. There, there's quite a bit of screws. 
Um, and it's I've got the options for the light and the uh, the um, fan, filter the filter fan. Okay. Which gives us that little splitter there, so that basically, uh, what we're gonna do is we're gonna move the LCD and the power supply outside of the envelope of the enclosure. Okay. Uh, to avoid uh, overheating critical elements. Okay. Um, and there are some extra parts that I printed that I haven't installed yet. These are the optional handles that, that would go here. Oh, okay. That make it really easy to, Easier to carry to move. And that's just, we just need some square nuts for that. Okay. Um, I'm, I was, I was counting that you probably have them cause I just literally pulled them off the print bed and you can see this was a uh, rough stringy. This was some older, uh, Zoltec Pet G I had handy that I ran these in. There's a couple there. And then I think there's an extra fasteners thing here somewhere, right? Actually, I would probably have square nuts. There we are. But they need to be the slim ones. Maybe. So I have, huh? Possibly. How many do you need? Uh, let's see. This guy needs one. Okay. And then I need six. Three each Three. for those. So seven. Okay. I need seven. Of so we got a couple here. What do we got? Nice. Uh, and Pooch, I missed it. It was in the call. Did the fan work again? Um, Not exactly. Right. <laughs> <laughs> we ended up uh, tricking it to pass the calibration with Steve's... Um, with my fan. Fan. So did these so, come out? Yeah. So, so. this is actually machined uh, out of polyethylene plastic which is an interesting choice. And then it uses these snap rivets here to hold the panel in place. Yeah. And uh, and they give you this option to print these handles, which makes it really nice if you're moving things around. Um, I've figured why not. Print so them. how do these... So what we do is we're gonna pop these uh, rivets out. And is there a top piece that goes on to kind of sandwich it? Nope. You know, it just goes no. in. What we do is we cut uh, these little um, tabs. Okay. Out here, I, I just use like flesh sneakies. cutters. Okay. So you can do that. And then um, I will start prepping off camera the power supply. What we're going to do is basically we're going to take the power supply off the Mark IV now and we're going to mount it to. What time is it? Five. We have an place. We've got, an hour. We got an hour. We can is that do enough it. time? Yeah, we can do it okay. in an hour. Can we do it in an hour? Yeah. <laughs> oh, there's that one. <laughs> I think I think either of us could do it in an hour. Well, I'm just talking about with the with chatting and interacting and so I many, think yeah, I you know, know, yeah, I like a talk. couple of gummies. I have some more gummies. We're we're all right. Did you set all set all the square nuts for those, and then you can trim out the other side too, and then we'll get the handles in place. Okay. If you want to. Um, now see that that external power supply brick so i put the square nut in there there's a singular hole at the base that we're going to bolt into this goes in if this guy goes right here and you'll see there's a there's a hole right through here so we're just going to run a m3 like six here okay. and then uh and then this little uh, guy here is to hold um the clamps the what do, you, what do we call that the, what is this guy the, the choke, little ferrite choke the choke yeah just to route the wire okay i'm not sure what the best camera is for this start taking the power supply back, back. out I'm way out back off i'm starting um hey leon do you have a ball driver for what size m3 oh yeah uh, here i know you oh, wanted to use it the long i know you boy. wanted to use it I love long boy i i i held it back before perfect perfect wondering what the rectangular hole is for um this one on top what is the top that top hole for? That's just an optional feed hole. So if you want to run uh, an external spool holder on top or something where you want to route in, uh, you can mount and you can feed straight down. There's also an integrated I'm, spool holder. Sounds like this thing is meant to be just like 
anything you want to do with modular. it. Modular, they're stackable. So, and that's I've got twelve wait. of these built, and I'm trying to figure out how I want to stack them because there's kind of some aesthetic, and I, uh -huh. I also like having my big five kilo spools, and so I'm trying to figure out what the optimal. I think these are ten millimeter screws for this. Taking up the power supply. Oink. Rep, rep box mount on the top. Yeah. Could be. I think somebody was telling me they actually were designing something specifically for that. Oh, did, I don't remember who it was. What did these other two go through? Bob? Oh, Bob? do I remove? Do I remove some of these? What are we talking about? There's some. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So there's a, if you just push the rivet from the back side. Do I need to remove this first? Uh, that would, yes, that would make your life a lot easier. Or I can actually, I can just pull it. There we go. There we go. Well done. Well done I haven't trimmed my fingernails in a few days. <laughs> so I got nice long fingernails. Apparently. On printables along with the top tilt up lid. Oh, the tilt up lid's cool too. But like I said, I was thinking I might stack them or I might put my uh, turntable on top. So for the time being, I just left them uh, bolted on. But there is a neat upgrade where you can make the top like a hinged lid, which is nice. Nice for accessing mm -hmm. things a little more easily. This is a nice handle for that. The downside is that if you have to work on the machine, it's uh, certainly not quite as nice. There's a there's an optional um, Molex plug where you can like quick disconnect the power supply, so it's easier to just pull the whole machine out of the oh, okay um, out of the box. Uh, we're not going to install that for this, but it's certainly an option for another time. a little bit backwards from what you did obviously we gotta take this off but yeah really not a big deal a lot of stuff on here so all right that's free this bad. I'm gonna get there so I can do this on camera You might be interested in two trees printer, the new clipper one. Would you consider reviewing that? Um, I don't tend to gravitate towards pre-built machines, no matter the brand. Um, cause my, my thing is basically building, right? I mean, it's the, in the name. it is in the name. Um, so in general, I don't, um, seek out pre-built machines. The exception to that has been the Magneto, um, but that's because that's... Magneto? Magneto. Magneto? Potato, potato? Sure. Um, but that is a definitely a different, something unique that's new to the hobby space. Yeah. Tell us why you're excited about that. Um, just to see how those linear, linear motors, linear motors yeah. work with input shaping and, right. um, theoretically some pretty quick, um, printing speeds according to their claims. So there, there's not anything really against any of the pre-built machines. It's just not my thing. It is not. And, and I have a limited amount of space and I'm already coming up on that with and custom builds. And time and energy. I need the fleshies. Side cutters. The... There you go. There you go. There you go. Snip. I'm doing all this beautiful table management work you did. All for nothing. What in the world? Yeah, not all for nothing. 
Yeah, how thick is the panels on here? Uh, the, the plastic panels? Mm -hmm. Metal panels? Two millimeter? Like 1.5 millimeter? Not that. Yeah, maybe two? 1.4. 1, 1. There you go. Well, these are thicker. The doors are thicker. Doors are thicker. Those look like... Three, maybe? More. Three or four? There's three. Three. Hold ya. Space, the first step on getting into 3D printing. Yeah. I mean, that's one of the reasons I like these. Uh, these cubes are stackable, and going vertical is an interesting... Mm -hmm. Not having to have all that racking, and I think Noob did a feature that where he had three of them stacked, like kind of behind his door in his uh, his space. It's pretty cool, I thought. Okay, this goes on uh, here, and that probably goes right there some, around. Uh, you got some so there's zip two ties holes, handy. We need holes to here. Zip some stuff. There you go. Thank you. Um. There's two holes in the printed part that go over the screw heads that are here. And then there is a, a hole down here that a screw goes in. I don't know how I'm actually going to make that happen. Use your Steve let's magic. Do, let's do this and... I believe in you. I believe in Steve. This? Can we get some merch that says I believe in Steve? I need some merch in general. I feel like I, I have... believe in Steve is uh, the merch that, that we need. I think some people we know would wear that. <laughs> hey, that's how you do it. Just enough room in that access hole there. Or just believe in Steve? I don't believe. Know. What, do what do you think? What do you guys think? Um, I don't think about the builds part of the name. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I was just saying because you were interested in that sort of thing, that would probably be a printer you might be interested in because it's it's like a trident. You need to sell the sticker. Steve Builds made me do it. <laughs> Guilty. Okay, what do we have? Here? Like does, bad, like bad influence. Let's go through here. Or... Good, like good bad influence, something like that. This thing goes and snaps on there. I like this the must go I like the role of being the off camera just peanut gallery. There we go. That goes in there like that. I can't see and then me. this just bottom hear me the... There. And then there's the, the 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 little choke the core thing goes into a clip on the bottom. Choke, choke, and that's choke, in there. Choke, choke. Okay. Power brick is installed. Excellent. It's the very reason Maker Viking as Bob made me do it shirts his merch. <laughs> the beard made me do it. The beard. The beard. The beard has a mind of its own. The beard made me do it. I could grow a beard so I could blame everything on it. <laughs> um, okay. So. I was at E3D and yes. at Smurf and sure, hanging, out, hanging out there. And one of the guys there has one of these enclosures with a Mark III in it. Right. And he has decked it out with all kinds of little like Revo nozzle mounts. And, oh, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you got all kinds of cool tool trays. I've seen people do some mm -hmm. neat stuff. Yeah, the tools on the side here with different um, driver spots and... Yeah, in fact, a yeah. lot of those, uh, if you get on printables, uh, a lot of them are like even uh, official uh, Prusa sanctioned or. Yeah. Uh, they, yeah, it's good stuff. Okay. Um, so I'm bringing all this back over. You're and bringing it all back. I've done. Okay. Got that, and we've got. Oh, so we take. Oh, shoot. The... I didn't free. You didn't free the ground? Oh, I can. Uh... It's probably great. Free the ground. Do you want here. some help? Just due to lack of space. We need to um what what do we want to do so cut cut the cable ties and then pop those clips this whole wire bundle here has to come free all the way back over to you know what all the way back over to this board all the way over yeah okay i can clip stuff and yeah it's fine here so all the power wires so um, apologies because we're not going to be able to get an angle on this that's fine 
as far as camera. Just to uh, tell you guys what we're doing, we're just basically uh, undoing all of the cable <laughs> bundle that uh, routes the wiring on the base of the Mark IV. Can you clip that for me, please? Thank you, sir. And then okay. we'll just keep those aside because these are going to actually go into a, a textile sleeve. Now this, the... So that we should... Here, let me... You got that? I'm going to lay it down. You should be able to lay it on top of the bed here, I think, if you want to just tuck it on back. Now. Okay. And then we just got to change the mounts off on that. Oh. All right, so... I just dug my... How about we Mike into move the box out of the way for just a second, if you will. I'll use the handles. Perfect. Now we got these new handles to move it. All right. Now, um, this guy, this guy. This. There was another baggie here. So how are we doing? I my, for some reason YouTube is not giving me a viewers or likes um, number. So how are we doing on that? I think we're, I can get viewers if I go over here. We have 200 viewers. Okay. Now. How many likes do we have now? Okay. What are we doing? We've got things so, to put on. Yeah. So the first thing I'm going to do is I had to take the power supply off that was on the side right here. And now we've got nothing reinforcing oh, our okay. axis. So they send us this metal plate for that purpose. And it's literally just a drop in. Uh, and we reuse the fasteners that we had, okay. and that adds some uh, nine likes. <laughs> we have nine likes. <laughs> Looks like 133. We got to get to at least 150. I'll tell you this. That's good for a Tuesday stream. If I was logged in, I would like it. Would you? Yeah. Would you do it three times? I would like it at least three times, okay. and I would have my entire Bangladeshi click farm. <laughs> another thou. <laughs> hey, Star Rose. Hey, Caleb. Hi, Caleb. Hi, Star Rose. Just mimic what you said. Mm -hmm. Just trust that you didn't make it up. All right, that was easy. Okay, Hit the easy that goes button. on there. You need an easy button. Um, would you be a doll and put the textile sleeve around that guy? It's this one. So what's happening, guys, is uh, the power supply is coming off of this side, and it's actually going to the back of the enclosure over here so that we can use the existing uh, slack okay. that we've got. And then to make it look nice, we're just going to tuck it into this uh, textile sleeve. Okay. And then I'm going to do and the same time the display is moving to the outside of the enclosure as well. So you well. get to do the same thing. I'm going to do the same thing with the display. And I'm also going to change out these mounts because these mounts are different to get it to mount to the front of the enclosure. So now that we've hit 150 likes, now the goal is 200 likes. No, oh, so we have 200 it's people. It's never enough, Steve. It's no, never it's not. Enough, it's enough. It's not. When will it ever be? I've enough? got I've got streaks and reputations to uphold. Yeah. We're going streaking, is, everybody. We're going streaking. Is, this is a right. tight fit for these. Name that movie. Who's going to be the first? Shoot. I know it. It's Will Ferrell. Um, you got Will Ferrell. Old school. That's Old it. Old school. Winner. That's it. Winner, winner, chicken dinner. So the... The um, Let's see your th a perfect thumbprint on this USB right yeah? here, so now I can steal your identity. The power panic cable on this is the tight part. Is the there's no like really good trick I've found for getting the textile sleeve. No, it's just, just kind of kind of have to flub with it until it works. Hey, Kevin. And then this is going to be longer than we need, it looks like. Yeah. Well, you, if you rotate it, it'll shorten the whole, you know what I mean? Yeah. Spin it, do the old spinorama. Oh, USB, come on. Spin. There we go. Make that USB. Okay. Really I'm going to pull oh. this cover off and see if I have um, power panic wire length to, to pull. I can, that's a good idea. Pull. That's why they pay you the big bucks, Steve. Mm -hmm. 
all the big bucks. Somebody does. Don't tell anybody that these parts are not printed in the same black ass. <laughs> I, I was being quiet. How does the giveaway work? G Caleb, if you enter, then um, at the three hour mark, well, at 7 p.m. my time, which is 45 minutes from now, um, or we'll do a drawing. You must be here to win. Um, and yeah, that's about it. If you are in the U.S. or Canada, then you get a coupon to the your local Polymaker store. Um, if you are not in the U.S. or Canada, then you get um, nothing. Uh, you get a pick a selection of filament from a form. Nothing. Nothing is in the box. So, this is definitely still too long. I don't really want to pull on that. No. Too much. So what's nice, guys, is they do give you the um, pull quite a bit, give you the mounts that come with the box uh, for either doing the Mark III or the Mark IV. The mounts are a little bit different depending on which machine you got, because obviously the LCD is different. I don't think I'm gonna be able to fish those square nuts out. Got any more square nuts for me? I just How many need, do you uh, need? I just need two. I mean, there's some in here. I just didn't want to spend time digging them out. Just need two here. Thank you. I, I owe you two square nuts or one taco. Oh. <laughs> Go, brothers. Thanks for the gifted memberships. So the, the going exchange rate. Oh, that's a fatty. I take it pooches never use the sleeve loom guides. Heard about the, the, the legend. The, zip the legend of the sleeve loom guides. I've, I've heard the legend of them as well, but I mean, is it? Are they really that great, guys? I haven't used them, no. I am. Have you used them? Has Steve used them? I have them? not. That's why I say I've heard of them. It's like the rumor. Um, this square nut is too fat. There we go. There we go. Now we've got some. Oh. Yeah, because there's there's fat ones and then there's I know, thin there's no ones. standard to the thickness of a square nut. Apparently. No, no, they're actually different. So especially when no, I'm when where where the, is there a standard though, or is it just like no? But you if you to try to spec. buy them from yeah, I bought a bunch when I first got my Prusa Mark III and they were because the no, well I had to find them um, the slim ones mm -hmm. and to find the source for them. Did you, do you have a secret slim fat square nut source now that you're not telling anybody about? Um, secret square <laughs> nut source, triple S. Technique cares. Hold with your forehead. That's okay. okay. We got a reasonable. Once again, tapping into plastic. It works. Makes pooch grumpy. <laughs> Let's see. What do we got? Don't forget to fill the form of the drawing. Link is in the description. Yep. Link is in the description and the pin post. I actually got that on there finally. That whole time. Now I'm going to try to give it the nice a nice twist. The old twister reel. Uh huh. So, say, so notice there's a dedicated earth ground. They were much more diligent about the grounding. Is that on the Mark IV? They are. That's an is... odd place to do it though, because it's just a DC signal. So it must just be for interference. Again, above my pay grade, I don't know. I'm going to assume there's a good reason for it. Yeah. Um, okay. Whew. That took way too long. I will say this. There were a couple units of the Mark III that just always had some, like, phantom... I don't know. They just seemed like they would reset, or they, they were more susceptible to, like, noise on the power line. No idea if it had anything to do with grounding or what. I'm hopeful that that's not the case for my Mark IVs, but we will see. And I mean, it was pretty rare. There was actually um, 
a few of them where I turned the power the power panic off. Like it was erroneously uh, trying to power panic based on because we have dirty power in the shop. Mm -hmm. And that just for some reason on a few units that really they couldn't handle it. And once I turned off power panic, they were fine. But you lose the power panic function. But was better than losing prints and does um, randomly. I mean, does power panic actually work well? Um, I, I I will say like in my house I've had it come in handy a couple times because even just the in this last storm where we lost power, hmm. killed mid print resumed and, able to resume. and and it worked perfectly. Able to resume before yep. the bed cools down too much to. <laughs> yeah, well that <laughs> depends that's on the, the part, thing, right? It depends on what it is. Look now, for loom tool and printable. Okay. Loom tool. Loom, loom tool. Loom tool. One thing, I, I don't know if anybody's following my Twitter, but like I did a post the other day where I went full send on a, on, uh, there's a feature inside Prusa Slicer where you can just say fill bed with instances, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, usually I won't do that because anytime you, you know, fill the entire, you're just, you're just mm -hmm. asking for trouble. Mm -hmm. But because cancel object is now uh, oh, yeah. on by default. Mm -hmm. And um, Check is it time because I'm these? running everything in a yeah, you, yeah, it can't hurt. I mean, there's, you get so many extra zip ties, like it really, it really can't hurt. Um, yeah, but because uh, it, it was enclosed and a cancel object, I sent it, and I've had ten consecutive perfect plates of these tiny little, you know, these mm -hmm. small surfaces. But but they're so closely packed together. I wonder if the thermal mass of it helped it too. I don't know. Hey, Peter. But it was uh, something that I, I definitely would not have tried or felt like uh, would have good odds of success with on my on my threes that were not enclosed. Yeah. Certainly. Number of variables being controlled that probably weren't before. All right. Um, How are we? We're, we're going to have to do, we're actually going to have to disconnect this to run it through when we put it inside the enclosure, which we're ready to do now. Um, one, one other thing. Uh... This um, cap would be on the Mark III, what you would swap out the top so that you can put the, this guy. The little Festo mm -hmm. connector. Is that what we're calling these, the Festo? Yeah, I think Festo, Festo is the brand. Festo pneumatic connector. Those were introduced with the MMU2. MMU2. Mm -hmm. I um, actually made um, Voron Afterburner mod mods that took that heat set this heat set um on the top of the afterburner so i could use those last thing we're gonna do is we're gonna mount the power supply to the plate okay. and i realized the plate. handle is on the wrong can you take this handle off please i was you put it on the wrong side I was a dork and i put it on the wrong side when i put that together how dare you i oh, know Sorry guys, I'm an imperfect human that just moves faster than the speed of thought sometimes. Let's see, and then that goes like that. Let's so this goes this on goes this side, this correct? Side. Correct, thank you. In a way, I kind of over pre-built machines, just want to finish my Voron stuff. Over pre-built machines wants to do Voron projects. It's always been about the build for me. Well, again, it's in the yeah. name. In the name. It's there. Okay. And so then, then that goes. There we go. And then this. And then we are going to need some zip ties because we're going to route that. Flip this over. I think Let's go between some washers there. We gotta loosen these up so see what's happening here. Those are gonna slide mm -hmm. in and then bolt and then there we need to find the screw for that. I feel like Is that an M4? It is an M4. Are these too long? Those are probably too long. Oh yeah. Did it come with any? It the 
Those it did. Um, it did, and I think I might not have had it in this bag because I don't see it. It's not critical, but it would be certainly more solid. What we could also do is just use the one that's I don't. I just don't know what's in there, and if we go too deep, I don't want to smash a board or something. There we go. So does this go basically to where that matches? Right. Or just to locate it. I'm just going to locate it. Yeah. yeah. Tighten it all the way. Okay. Yeah, that's a these bad. guys can get tightened now. And that one needs a long boy. Mm-hmm. Go, long boy, go. Yeah, okay. And then we're going to put our cover back on here and we're going to run this around here and then zip, zip it, tie it right there. Right to that. Okay. That's pretty... This is a lot more than I thought. It's not terrible. Oh, I didn't say it was terrible. We still have but 34 the... minutes anyway. We also spent a little bit more time fiddling with it to get the wires free. Then okay, so is this, does this happen to be the same as those? It is um, too long. Because we can long. probably, you think the... It's, you know what? Uh, use could, one of those. We, maybe we could use one of these. Yeah. Although... We need a calibrator profile for PLA and Rapido. That's the, that's the same length, isn't it? It is. Okay. What about one of these guys? Yeah. Against the right. I think any. I think a shorter M4. You got honestly any spare M4 that would be. Oh, you know what my or M4s could, are out here. You can throw like this nut. Oh no, this is perfect. No, it's not. It's the wrong. Touch. It's it's probably uh. That's the one for for that. It's a weird uh is it? dimension. Um, M4 by six button head. There we go. Yeah, that'll do. That'll do, pig. That'll do. That'll do. Extra hey, Victor, we are on to playing with Prusa enclosure stuff. I'm just going to throw this in an enclosure. There we go. And then you said one goes where? We got it. We're, that's oh, it. that one already goes there. Okay. And that's that weird size. I don't know. Whatever Delta uses here for this mm -hmm. mount thing. So it's a it's a non-metric. And this is magnetic? This is Yeah, the, this is pretty clever. You'll see when we put it in there the okay. way that that... And I believe I got that on the right side. Yes. yes. Okay. Okay. All right. So this is going to be good to have an extra set of hands. So I'm going to put the display over, over here. here. And it's now original. I'm going to put that on the floor. Let's move that. You can put the, now use those handles and lift with your legs so you don't pull anything because it's the insurance it's policy heavy. here. Yeah. <laughs> He's, he just spun it on one finger. Every day. Okay. <laughs> open the doors for me if you wouldn't mind. Okay. Right, no. so that is gonna go this through goes in first. Yeah. Oh, maybe put it, put it just put it on, it on the bed. bed. Yeah, on the bed there. That's oh. good. You know, that is a some, tight fit. There's some posts. It is a tight fit, but it's good. Did you end up losing power other than that blip during stream? I did not. I was expecting it, but I did not. Hey, R. Chapman. He's got put spot. Oh, that's fine. That's easy oh, does that fix. does these, that kind of these, just this, bumpers? Yeah, the bumpers in there. Um, I don't know if they just had them in different positions for different types of uh, things that they were testing to go in the enclosure, but it just indexes it so it doesn't vibrate around or that not essential. Goes... Sorry, just goes on something like that. Yep, you got it. it okay. Just taps directly into the base. Same thing here. I'll do this one. Yeah. Oh, does this go outside? Yep, it goes outside. Okay. I'm going to move the bed forward just a little tight. And you know what? Hold on, we did it. It's upside down. Can we rotate it in the hole? Nope. We're going to back out. Digital. Upside down. Oh, scratching the window. That's definitely nicer with an extra set. And then does this have to go, does it have to go through this dot dash here? Like this way? It's gonna tip so it's, up. Oh, move your hand there for me. You see what's oh, happening Oh, holy moly. Isn't that wild? Yeah. Okay, so there's uh, these twist lock tabs that are in here. I'm just speaking inside the, coming to you from inside the enclosure. Yes. 
Little There's echoey. some twist lock tabs that hold the power supply in place that ideally you index first. Just rotated them to the correct position. Okay. Fit over, and then I twist to lock. And, and then, then that magnet helps hold it in place up there. With something in the back. Is there a thing that it Did magnetized we to? Did we miss? Uh, this, this has to rotate 90 degrees. <laughs> it's okay. Here's what we're gonna do. <laughs> okay. Blame pooch, blame, blame pooch. pooch. Mine, my Pinocchio has a wooden mind. Tipping. In. Oh, All okay. right. So you can get a screwdriver to that. And rotate it 90 degrees for me, and I'll move this bumper while you're doing that. And that that magnet magnetized attracts to the frame. Yep. Interesting. We'll, we'll, we'll spin the thing around so you guys can see what we're talking about in a second. Yeah. That's an interesting design, huh? Yeah. I, pretty clever, honestly. Given the challenge of like, it has to be able to be removed. And this is uh, why they developed that Molex quick release, I suspect, because it's just way faster to disconnect mm -hmm. the power supply completely. There we go. Okay. <laughs> and then this for the display is just routing down and out this hole. Like so. And that has enough room. Oh, the whole thing comes forward, right? Right. Myself some space and they technically want you to zip tie it to that post there but they don't really pooch. know why pooch in a box pooch inside a box very echoey huh <clears throat> i'll tell you what i'm excited for what tacos tacos what kind of tacos today oh man you know we we, we did the sampler last time did no i i think i went with uh, uh carnitas last time mm -hmm. which never disappoints i love carnitas but, I did. Uh, I think I did fish and carne asada. I know, but you know what? They're like those street tacos, and they're small. Mm -hmm. And I'm feeling really hungry today, so I might have to do like four, or like four. Five. Yeah. I don't know. Okay. Lots of food talk towards the end of stream. I don't know why I whispered that. So yeah. you connect first or screw first? Okay. You have fun with that. <laughs> no, I'm gonna connect. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Probably debatable what the right procedure is. How about we'll do a little bit of both? And we'll do the connections. At least there's no way to do. You remember on the Mark III how there was like two of the exact same ribbon cable and it was one had yes. one and yes. two? Yes. And... EXP1 and EXP2. I was, I was always flipping those for some reason. It doesn't really hurt it, but annoyed me all right you know you long long boy would be good for this yeah move this all the way back Get a little more a little more angle there yeah, I'm not, I'm not power gonna... flickering in socal uh oh I'm gonna order me a long boy do you think they can make them even longer I, think mm, longer I don't think so custom what if i did a custom i cut it and then i extended it weld it <laughs> <laughs> Like from this far away. <laughs> you, you, <laughs> you you measure torque by by how many rotations it twists. Yeah. <laughs> Why not, right? All Is right. Anything keep the printer in place inside the enclosure. Yeah, yeah. there are little bumpers. Yeah. That, Can we get um, any closer here? Let's, let's twist it. I can also do this. Oh yeah, you got your little guy. Get this. So if we start looking in here, we've got these pieces that bolt into the bottom, and, then there's, and there's, some there's some several there. locations where they can go and then you see them in the back there the yeah. back corners yeah so and it, it still has the inside vibration feet on the bottom this is where the power supply went in yeah it's, it's a little weird it kind of tucks up and away and then there's these little twist lock tabs here mm -hmm. that, that allow you to pop it and out the display goes under there and then to the front and then up inside here there's those handles and what is this is this for a What's oh, uh, so the, that's where the uh, spool holder twists in, and then you can feed it here, and then if you look over here... Spool holder, so does it go across it, the thing? It just comes out this far. So it's, it's oh, one so of the posts a... off of the stock spool holder goes oh, okay. on here, except for I didn't bring that. 
Okay. Because I forgot it. But uh, if you look here, so this is actually a pretty clever feed setup. So the spool would mount here, mm -hmm. goes and up come through out this, through and then routes down through there. And that's how it how it feeds. If you want to feed off the sock thing. What I've been doing is I put my turntables underneath, and then I route a big PTFE tube up and over through that hole here, and then I come down. Neat. Yeah. So um, that does bring up an interesting point, though. We can maybe we can rob one of the posts off. I can of grab here, one. Yeah. And then and then we'll do that ASA print. Yeah. Okay. And then we'll get tacos. Yes. Excellent. I'll uh, power it on. What are we gonna you, print? We're doing that. Um, we're not gonna see the whole thing print. It'll have to just kind of print <sighs> while we're eating. What is a yeah. good? Uh, what is a good print, guys? Uh, I don't want to do a bench. Like anything but a benchy. Let's see what folks say. I'll be right back. It's gonna be ASA. Maybe like a, a gear bearing. I don't know. Somebody give us some good print ideas, please. I'm gonna put the splitter on. Keychain. Yeah. Print a taco, some squirrels. Yes, there are LEDs inside, and I'm gonna show you those in just a second once I get the power to it, as well as the fan. Uh, they are working on an XL enclosure. There is an XL enclosure. Although I've seen some aftermarket designs uh, for the XL enclosure too that look pretty interesting. I suspect we'll see some other stuff. People are asking about LEDs. I'll rob another part off of my printer. Mm -hmm. Oh, never forgot to put the cover back on the yeah. on the power supply on the back, but we can do that later. You mm -hmm. can always do a low poly cat. What color is this ASA we're printing with? Just Prusa orange. Okay. Uh, all right. So, uh, do, uh, we got a plug. Oh, we need our power. Here, is this here. plug here? Huh? Oh, yeah. Let's plug it into that's that guy. That's one of those. Splitter dude. The rear turn on? Yep. Okay. Oh, so got lights. lights. And fan works. That's good. Go ahead and power it on there. We should see display. Yep. Yes, 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 yes. And then... This is cool. Yeah. So, pretty quiet. Definitely, if you forget to turn that on and you run an ASA, you smell ASA. I've it's really? been great if you if you have it on. I don't smell anything in the house. Mm -hmm. um, all right, uh, preheat. We don't need to preheat. Oops, work. Let's clean the bed. Yes. Let's clean the bed. I've got a paper towel, clean paper gonna towel down here. I preheat for ASA, so it can at least be heating while we're yeah. working. Cali toaster. I think that's a uh, pretty long print is the problem. I do need to be able to take this home. Yeah. So, but we, it should be something we should use. I, honestly, I think if we do something like the gear bearing, I haven't done that in ASA. And we could, it, if we, we could do print it, the knob and in, yeah. we can print the knob and it would actually probably finish and we can put an orange knob on it. Yeah. Okay. All right. Okay. <laughs> Actually, there's some other, uh, there's a, there's one that's got the, the finger ring. Can we do at least do that? You yeah, let's I'm find, find a, go to printables and. Okay. Let's slide back a little. Got all the stuff all over the place. Oops. Here, I'm going to take a bio break, powering off my audio. Good. Thank you. You're <laughs> How's everyone doing? What do you think? This has been fun. Um, little extra here that we wouldn't have been able to do. Let's look for a, oh, let's go here. And we're gonna look for a MK4 knob. Nice build. We're gonna put an orange part on here. I think that's worth it. We're gonna put an orange part on here. Um, question is which one we want something relatively simple we need a case like that for the switch wire this case is um expensive um but there are definite there's at least thought 
into it, as we've seen in how things mount, the the routing, so. <laughs> Good call. Good call, Wick Central. Okay, which knob do you like? We've got... Ooh, that's a fun one. It's like a open source one. There was one I remember seeing that had like a, a thumb ring. That's... Oh, you know what? That's my old do... school style. You like the old school style? Do, do they have a knob that goes up to 11? <laughs> there, this is what I was thinking of here because I like to be able like to, that? you know, quick, quick spin. You know that one? Mark IV knurled knob. Knurled knob Ooh. with finger ring and, and bling. Finger ring and bling? Apparently. All right. Yeah, let's we'll run only that. print it one color. Um, hex? Yeah. With a hex in the middle? I think so. Okay. Let's download that. Save it to. What are you doing? You just send it right to printables. Hmm? Or send it right to Prusa Slicer. That's all right. You do it however you want. Oh, um, well, because we need to start up Prusa Slicer and probably do the quick update. Oh, that's it's done. Next, um, new version, run installer after download. That's fine, download. And it's downloading the new Prusa Slicer. Live knurled knobs, it was my first thing I learned to make on my lathe. Nice. Knurled knobs. Put all these printed parts together. Um, is that? doing its thing oh there we are yes i think i can close this now continue the update um we don't need anything i was looking at your pi 5 and i was thinking about i think i'm gonna make like i'm gonna do a what's the what's the home automation server that people do with those uh home assist is it home assist not home, home assistance. assistance that's isn't that apple's thing home kit is it HomeKit? No, yeah, that's Home, Home Assistant is the open. I think so. Someone will someone will correct. Someone correct us. tell me. I want to do. Someone like will a, correct us. <laughs> so I'm using like an old automation thing, and I thought maybe okay, Home. So Assistant. So this is it, good. and let's go into the configuration wizard and just make sure. Oops. Let's install. install. <clears throat> Home Assistant. Yep. Yeah. Who's uh who's run Home Assistant? Like any. Yay, nay. Is that a, a good, go the Prusa, good application? It's probably overkill want, to have a Pi 5 for it, though, huh? We want the 0.4 Prusa um, input shaper profile. Yeah, but tick... So, uh, oops. Uh, that doesn't matter. It's, I was going to say. Yeah, this tick is your... This is, I always tick my 0.6 and 0.8 oh. as well, because I swapped those nozzles out quite a bit. I put an obsidian on mine, just a 0.4 So you obsidian. already have an obsidian on the... Or did you use the adapter and use no, an old... No, I bought, I bought it, like, I get, months ago. The, I have to get uh, an obsidian snoob. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, I think that's it. So we should be able to go to input shaper mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and we're going to just pick, um, Prusament ASA, mm -hmm. Prusament ASA okay. and the speed. Sure. Sure. Speed. And then we can open up the, you send it to this now if you wanted, that's fine. That guy. It is. That looks good. And apparently it gives us a separate piece for the insert. Oh, that's insert. like a little insert if we wanted want to do a to different do. color. Yeah. So you can delete. Oh, it's it's integrated. You so can we can see how split. split it. There you go. Two parts, I think. Yep. Just and delete we that can one. Delete that one. Save us a whole whopping slice now. Second. We got a 20 minute print. Oh, perfect. My system is good. Oh, is this thing? This thing is heated up, right? Uh, yeah. yep. Okay. Yep. So that is there. Where's the? We gotta load the filament. Yep. Here's, uh, here's this. Yep. Let's put that. I've I've all but uh, stopped using the thumb drives. I got wireless, so yeah. I installed. That's each what I do. Of things now, and mm -hmm. and then it gets even better when you go to Prusa Connect. So Manage let's eight. send this to the SD card. Uh -huh. And that is apparently it. With the little Sandy and the Mini Mini 13 runner. What is that? Mm. Is that a plane? Mm. You're exporting binary G code for a Prusa mm. printer. Yes, that's, yeah, that's fine. 
That's a new thing. It is, and you have to make sure you have the latest firmware to support it. Oh, mm -hmm. and I already knocked the eye off of me. <laughs> <laughs> it's back to the... It's the, oh, 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 the oh, oh, orgina. 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 Get a silver Sharpie and... Yeah, sure. Electrolyte filament. Once you plug that in, it's going to ask you if you want to... Well, uh, yeah, that's fine. Is it dry? Is it so dry? I. It's been drying for a few hours now. I don't think that fan's, like, overly loud. I haven't looked to see what the replacement cartridge is. I'll show you what this looks like really quick, though, guys, if you want to see. So, the... I don't know if this is a common size... Just taking the oh, that's the the carbon. What are we looking at? There. Here? Yep. Yeah, so it's carbon on that Excellent. side, and a and a HEPA filter. It's a lot louder when that's out. Made by Alveo 3D4 Prusa. But yeah, we gotta. And if you touch this, you'll get carbon all over your finger. Anyway, slide that back on there. It's a lot quieter with that on. It is. Okay, so what's the routing here on? Yeah, so we just put the spool on the hook. And then we go, oh, there's a little arrow right there. Okay. We just go up through there. And then we watch it till it feeds all the way down to there. And then it'll say loading filament. Oh, thanks. Starts until it goes clicky clicky. And then we say we're feeding it some ASA. Whoa. Because it was already at the top. Yeah, I think so. It does its little movement. Yeah. Fine. You're going to leave the door open because it's PLA. It's ASA. Yep. So we will be reclosing those doors. Bye-bye. As much chamber so, temperature as we can get. I think that's, I don't know, we want to have our decibel meter, but it's it's pretty quiet. It's not bad. It's it's not bad. If you guys can hear it, and if, if I, like, can if get I turn some. it off. Right, hold on, but That's off. I have the noise filtering on. Oh, so it's not even going to. Yeah. Not even going to know. Okay. It's... it's it's like 67 decibels just by ear just listening yeah. what do we that's about what my oh i see that's that's doing. louder than my air compressor is supposed to be yeah it's only supposed to be 60. it's probably i was probably completely wrong <laughs> uh loading. it needs a clicking flag door let's see is it loading yeah oh yep there it goes now let's see we don't have a sock on that i oh, don't we can see it think <laughs> we had it Color is correct. I don't think we need to purge anymore. One thing I want to check before I send this print, there is an option in the hardware settings for next extruder silicone sock. It is off. off. Okay. So we want to make sure that- Oh, I didn't know that. I need to look at mine because yeah, I have a silicone it'll, sock online. It'll, it'll over temp. Uh, if, so if you have the sock on mm -hmm. and it's not set, it won't compensate for the heat retention that the sock. Interesting. Provides. I didn't know that was there. It's something to look for. Yeah. Anyway, we're good. We're going to run the prints. Hey, Pex Peppers, welcome. I saw you earlier, but I forgot to say hi. Knob Hex. So we get a nice little preview here. We print and we're Let's off to here. the races. You see our little. And it does the adaptive meshing where it only meshes where it needs. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, we'll see. In fact, because it's so small, it'll. Uh, it's nice that it doesn't have to probe the whole the whole shebang. So I'm not on the very latest firmware. I think I'm a version or two behind on mine. So ah, okay. They they're moving fast and furious with all those uh, those updates. Ooh, is it Haribo time? That's Haribo time. We're printing. And these are Amaribos. I just coined that phrase. These are Amaribos. 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 Yep. You heard it here first, ladies and gentlemen. Yep. Trademark pooch. Amaribos. There are a few of the OGs. You got three of the OGs left. I don't know. I wouldn't. I wouldn't bring up. <laughs> it's rude. I'm a guest here. The Amaribos are definitely softer. Haribos and charcoal. Yummy. <laughs> what do we got? We have 11 minutes left till giveaway time. We have 220 people here. How many likes do we have? Have we hit 200? Okay, we're moving. Can we see? Mm -hmm. okay, we got... I got this camera on. All right. <laughs> okay. Y axis. I used the blind hole washer technique on my V0.2 frame. Definitely think it helped. Awesome. 177. 23 more likes. We can do it. 
We have 219 people here. Come on, everybody. It's rally time. 23 more likes in 11 minutes. So see, we got a little, uh, we got a little booger on the tip and it's going to go through its nozzle cleaning now. Mm -hmm. It just dabs the dab, dab. I'm gummy extruder. We can pitch that to Ellie. Mm -hmm. I mean, theoretically possible, mm -hmm. I suppose. No idea what the <laughs> properties of gummy. Printing. It's gonna mesh, right? Mm -hmm. So it says it wants to do nine probing points based on the surface area for this particular print. How bad is ASA to print? It's not um, if you have an enclosure of some sort. You need some ambient temperature increase. Honestly, for one this small, it's it's almost like not even a big enough print to really get into work territory. I mean, it, it, it would if you were just out in the open in a cold garage, but these are good. <laughs> oh, that was it. It finished the mesh. Yeah. No, now it's just doing its final temp. Mm -hmm. So see here on the display, mm, no, you can't, but it cycles through how much time's remaining. Mm -hmm when the print's gonna end, how much time has passed. That's not, that's an update because it didn't do that at first. Mm -hmm. right. It was really frustrating because it would, it, do you know how to make this thing tell the, your actual time? Because it's always to GMT or CDT or whatever. Yeah, you can set the time zone. In fact, it looks like we just haven't set it here, but let me just point at the display here so you can see that. So this is why I was saying there's three dots here and it'll cycle through. 19 minutes. And I'm not end. sure why it's not giving like a... An well, estimate. it's not, I there's no time it set. It's actually going. There's no time set is the thing. That's why. Well, it's 20 yeah. minutes. And the... Here goes the print. Oh, uh, did we get, no, got good adhesion. We aimed well. Can it go down? Oh, we can. I'm getting a lot of reflection. Oh, yeah. I don't think we're going to be able to avoid that. Okay. You see, it just stuck perfectly. Lay it down. He did the mesh. He did the Prusa mesh. We would call that a perfect first layer. That's another thing I was excited about for the Magneto. Magneto mm -hmm. is uh, it has a load cell. Mm -hmm. Um... I mean, that seems to be the gold standard at this point. You know, is that is that so. bed probing in final form now, load cells? And we're still, like I said, there's still promise of a lot more tech and like the pre-detection of clog and stuff because detecting, using the load mm -hmm. cell on mm -hmm. the other side of the thing mm -hmm. is really, really interesting opportunities on that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> this should be most of the way there by the time it's time for giveaway. Yeah, we have seven more minutes. Because we have 18 minutes remaining here. 225 people, and how close are we to that 200 likes? So the Thames, it's printing at 260, 110C on the bed. Uh, print speed is 100%. Sound mode is loud. When this is done, we can look at the default profile and see what the speeds and stuff are set to 190 10 more likes what do you mean with the speeds where like, we can look at the print settings ah. when it's sure Boop. 10 more we'll it's, always, it. it's always satisfying to know it works and i guess we have a questionable fan here but obviously right now it doesn't the the if you weren't with us earlier, there was a, a weird phenomenon. It just didn't want to pass the uh, the, the RPM test on the, uh, not the print fan, the uh, the hot end fan. Mm. Jake and from State Farm did his part. Thank you, Jake. We're at 206 now. Awesome. <laughs> 
207, 208. Kind of nice to get a little part preview now on the window, huh? Mm-hmm. I suspect we're going to see a lot of interesting stuff as like firmware updates and like, you know, we're only when scratching the, touch the surface with, with the enabled with, with the UI. Yeah. Hopefully I be able we'll... to cancel object with the touch screen. That'd be cool. Huh? I've been toying with upgrading my network 2.5 gig and running Casa OS Unraid or one of the other home server setups. I have an Unraid server, but I don't have any fiber available here. Mm -mm. What's your connection like up there? No, we don't have fiber either. It's uh, are you satellite? No, it's not. Thankfully, it's better than satellite. It's um, what are they called? Altis now. One of my coworkers lives in um, Applegate, mm -hmm. and he's satellite. Yeah, and yeah, yeah well, satellite is terrible. No, we're we're lucky. Like the, our community is in a little space where we actually have cable, and it's you know like hundred megabit up and down, but it's not fiber. Yeah, I think I and I pay for it. So like you can get up to gigabit supposedly, but I have two services here. Oh yeah, I have cable for the house, but I was having lots of latency issues in in the stream. Interesting. So my cable is gigabit down and thirty megs up. Right. So I added an AT and T connection, which is only fifty down and ten up. Right. But I haven't had a single problem on streaming. So on that. something with the latency I, or the yeah. Huh. A terrible ping. The um, since I went to AT and T, I haven't had any internet-based issues. I, I Is it lifting see, a little I bit? I see a little lift. Yeah. I see a little lift. How satisfying is it to build it and then then it just prints? Of course, that is satisfying. It is nice to see it work. So I would say we have questionable build sheet prep. Yes. We were probably really needed to do a soap, soap and water clean. I, that um, still blows my mind how well that actually works. I know. Like, I've been just, you know how they, uh, everything's moving to that power wash, like spray. I don't know, you guys use that for your dish soap or whatever, but the, it like works so beautifully. Like Dawn I just, Power I Wash. I just bought that. Yeah, the clear stuff, not even the blue stuff. Because clear I has, no, to, ah, has no um, like, scents or anything. Okay. I've just it's, been using that, yeah. and I go in there and just, you know, uh, a non a non scratching with the blue sponge. Mm -hmm. So a little power wash, mm -hmm. warm water. Yep. And it works a treat, honestly. And, and I don't I don't even IPA after that. I'll just I'll just do a soap wash for the for the first print. Absolutely, you don't need to. No. Um, what I for most of my prints, I do put a super thin layer of uh, purple glue stick on. Really. Um, and then I usually take IPA and I'll dilute it and spread mm -hmm. it so it's even. So you don't get any texture from it. It's cheap, cheap insurance, really. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, and you do a lot of, a lot of ASA too. So. Yeah. It is lifting around that front ring. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You can see it on the camera there too. Yeah. It'll, it'll finish. It I think might. we got enough surface area. I don't think we're gonna break free, but we'll see. Mm. What do you wanna? You. you I think, think it'll gonna, break free. You think it's gonna pop? I think, I think it's gonna pop. Place your bets now, guys. Is it gonna pop? Pop or not? Thirteen minutes left. I keep grabbing all reds. All reds. Yes. Mm. You can help pop resurface a texture not. plate with. Martin says pop. No pop. Martin says no pop. Once I like this. Pop or not is a, a fun game. Pop or not. Survey time. Can you run a survey? Survey time. Yeah. Let me find where the mouse is. Got a pull. Let's do that. Pop or not? Start. Will it pop? Yes or no? Let's do it. Double drawings if we're wrong. Here we go. Oh, <laughs> a lot of people saying yes. Say, I think it's going to hang on, guys. I think it's going to hang on. <laughs> What do we have? We have one more minute until giveaway time. And that's that's really lifting in the front. <laughs> uh-oh, uh-oh. What was that? Was that an unsupported bridge? There's something wonky there where it just yeah, spat I think, out I think, a... I think, I think something it's, weird it, with the, it's the model. No, it's the model. I bet you if we look in it... Here. 
It definitely yeah, threw yeah. out like Big. an unsupported bridge it's, there. It's, yeah, it's, yeah, 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 yeah. It's a, it's, it's a quite the intelligence. <clears throat> it's a blind hole. It oh, and it popped. It there could it be modeled better. I blame that. It probably just needs mm -hmm. a little support there too, huh? It popped. Dang, wrong again. <laughs> all right yeah okay 57 percent though all right but it prints we extruded asa yeah and it's clearly operating in, in, a, in a to. in a shape and did you notice i didn't i didn't smell anything let's turn off oh. the it's definitely got a it's definitely got a smell in there that is yeah i think bed prep is our is our culprit there can we uh <laughs> rerun it again with support or do we not care? It's seven o'clock. Let's do the drawing. And... Seven. Let's do the drawing and Let's go get I, tacos. And I don't. Yeah, we can get tacos because I don't. I don't want any orange on my. <laughs> I'm gonna. <laughs> I'm gonna print one of these and I'm gonna come up and, and I'm gonna find the on. one that the eye has the eventually or organol. gone away. I'm just. I'm gonna name this one Organol. <laughs> just for you. Um. Okay. We are going to give away Polymaker filament. So the way I do this, if you're new, is I close the, the, the form when I haven't had a new entry in three seconds. So that three seconds starts now. Um, so if you haven't gone in there, uh, the link is in the description and the pin post. So this bed car, prep, lack of bed prep. Yep. Isn't amazing. that car is that, awesome? Is that 3D sets? It is. Yeah, it's man. their they new one. It's their new one. Stuff. All of that was printed on my Mark IV. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Almost all of it. I printed some of it on that it, it switch wire. It looks so there. good. I mean, honestly. So. Is it ASA? It is. No, it's all. Um, it's almost all Jesse uh, PLA. So okay. that's Brad's orange. Oh uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, and then they're black, and then the. Can I show it? This is. Yeah. It, okay. Um. Okay. New entries in three. Um, let's go. Oh, nope. Let's go there. That's fine. And okay, we haven't had one. So three, two, three, two. Tuxedo, thanks for the gifted memberships. Oh, there was a new one. Three, two, one and a half, one. I think that's a good number. End. <laughs> Look at that 3D sets model. When did they drop yeah. this? This is incredible. This is only like two and a half weeks old. Yeah. Maybe three weeks, two weeks, two weeks the, Monday or three weeks Monday? The detail Yesterday. on this, guys. This is great. If you're not checking out 3D sets, 3dsets.com. And I've seen some people do some really cool stuff with the, you put a little reflector behind there, you put a little LED action. You got an operable hatchback. Hey, Kevin. Welcome. There's lots of squirrels around here all the time. Yeah, the doors open by lifting the handle. Uh huh. Yeah, that's clever. It, it clip, clips on there. The, ho the hood opens. Bar. Yeah, I will be continuing this build on the seventeenth, I think. And I'll put it back from whence it. I think came. the seventeenth will be the next Don't um, members only it. stream. Don't yeah. drop it. <laughs> I'm taking that car across the pond. Probably not. Um, here, let's go here, and. You see, the hunger is starting to get to us. Mm -hmm. Angry. Angry pooch. Wheel of names. Let's get rid of last one. Delete. And who got the first one in? And Matt got the very first entry. And who got in at the last second? Number 269. Joe Mike Makes got the last entry in. K2 Kevin says hi. Hey K2. Is Steve planning on taking that car across the pond? No. K Dow. Um. Okay. So what number range do we want to do? Do you have a suggestion? Uh, I mean, we want to do three to fifteen. Three to fifteen. Three to fifteen. Three to fifteen. How many times are we going to shuffle this? Three to fifteen. How many? How many Polar Tab Club members are we gonna get tonight? Seven is clearly. Uh, Who? People. I saw a lot of sevens. Someone said a lot you let, of sevens. Joe Mike says you let Alan in here. Are you mad? Mad. 
A lot of sevens? Okay. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Spin. Six point nine. Who are we gonna get? That's very close to six point nine. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Round up. Huh? So who do we got? You have two minutes to say something in chat once your name comes up. Pepper. Pex peppers. Pex peppers. Pex pepper. Pepper. You still around? You have two minutes to say something. Oh, I gotta actually start the timer. Oh, come on. Here we go. Pex Peppers, you around. You have two minutes. Oh, there you are. Awesome. Congratulations. That was easy. No new members to the Polar Ted Club. How many do you currently have? Uh, are you unknown. Keeping, are you keeping track? I started to. There's that's, a there's a role kinda, there's a role funny. in my Discord now for Polar Ted Club member. That's funny. So I will send you an email. Um, so congrats. Awesome. You will get a coupon to the, um, U S polymaker store. Steve, this was a lot of fun. This was. Thank you for, uh, all, right, all your help this. in it and humoring me and all my, you know, things I've messed up or did backwards and I'm <laughs> doing it and redoing it and whatnot. And she'll, she'll be well cared for in the farm. And yes, we'll, we'll put an identifying, uh, something, mark on, something on, on there. Organol. Well, when you're talking about upgrading your whole farm yeah. and looking for assistance on that, yeah, that it was, it just looked, it, it made sense yeah. to, to play around with it, see what it actually does take, it's, be able to show the full process. Given the amount of time it's taken me to build just the enclosures, it's feeling rather daunting getting like, because <laughs> I've got, I think this is the fifth now that's done yeah. out of like 24. Yeah. So there's a ways to go. Um, let me let me get in here real quick. Oh, I'm sorry. For anybody who's in here still, if you go to Pex Peppers, um, what is it? PexPeppers.com. There's apparently a Steve builds 20% discount right now. So, um, I do I do thank Steve all the time for the fans <laughs> and the fan. Although we did end up, he he I, still, I have has, his, he still yeah. has his fan. We just kind of <laughs> faked the whole thing out. So, so I'll, I'll back to this. This is. What it is and it was cool to see the enclosure because i i saw it at like e3d was the first time i'd seen it in person honestly i um, i find myself way more impressed by it than i uh than i originally you know thought i would be and i think it just takes putting oh uh, now i've done I'll it. Fix it now i've done it I'll i broke it. the cardinal rule of filament yep never let the end go <laughs> um yeah no it's a, it's a fun build and the mark four is a fun build and Anybody that's thinking about upgrading their Mark III, you've got three different options now uh, to basically double the speed and kind of hard to, to argue with that. It's really nice to see uh, the, the improvements that have been made along the way and that you can upgrade it, you know, because I, yeah. I hate, you know, seeing uh, all that investment go to waste potentially. I mean, Steve you get made me do it. You know what I mean? Oh, yeah. Oh, so, um... Yeah, this was cool. This was a good kickoff build for my Tuesday streams. So it's like a lot of fun opportunities for things to build, man. So I look so forward to seeing what's next on the list. What's happening next? Is it the Milo? Tuesday. No, Tuesday streams. Next Tuesday is going, I'm going to start on my green V2. Mm. So I'm going to be refreshing that. That printer went kind of into the back corner printing when I was doing some Revo testing. Okay. Or um, Revo Roto testing. Roto. Roto testing. So it is in dire need of a refresh and get back into service. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to do a bunch of mods on that. I'm going to put the Leviathan controller with a Nighthawk tool head board mm. and um, the Vitali CNC tap on it and a, um, a, loom, a lightweight the lightweight labware, I think, um, uh, or the, I'm getting the names wrong, mm -hmm. but a different X extrusion mm -hmm. on there. Mm -hmm. A bunch of things that we're gonna just kind of go through a bunch of mods and put it on there. Very cool. And check it out, so. Cool. Well, I look forward to that. Thank yeah. you for having me again. Yeah. This was a lot of fun, guys. We'll find another reason to do this at some point. Thanks for, for <laughs> entertaining as we, you know, humoring us while we mess around. It yeah. was a lot of fun. This Sunday, we'll be back on the Rook. Um, Milo is going to be until at least the next weekend. I've, um, not had enough time to print all the parts for that. Mm. So there's a lot of parts. Yeah. 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 So PF Dennis, thanks for being a member. Buddha, thanks for being a member. 
Um, we're going to go get tacos. Tacos. So, tacos. Thanks again, everybody. Thanks for the gifted memberships. Thanks for um, everything. We'll see you hopefully on Sunday. Bye-bye. Take care, everyone. <laughs> Bye. And um, take care and enjoy the build.